Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin Tech here bringing a video on information technology. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, happy Saturday. And let's see who joins today. I actually went to get coffee. Sorry I took so long. I needed to get coffee. You know, I can run. Kev runs on Duncan, you know. I run on coffee. I run on Duncan. So if I don't have my coffee, I cannot work and function properly. So let me adjust my camera. All right. Let's see who joins now. Let's see how many people join. So, let's see who joins now. Let's see what happens. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see. I'm waiting for people to join first before I I, I start sending the invite to everyone. Obviously, you know, you know the drill. We we have to we have to wait it out. See, see who see who joins first before I start. You know, giving out the the Zoom invite. So. I'm uh <laughs> run on Duncan. Good PM, you're late. I'm not late. I'm late like five. I'm like I'm late like five minutes. Come on, man. Ah, I'm late like five minutes. Come on, not that bad. All right, give me a second. Seven, four, okay, that looks right. All right, all right, give me a second. Whoop. I'm doing good, man, I'm doing good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm waiting for everyone to, I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm inviting everyone right now, so just, just bear with me. Uh, I'm gonna do copy, paste, copy, Paste, paste, copy, spread with me, copy, paste, copy, paste, Peace. All right. I, I, I think that's everyone. All right. So working in shop. Hello. Hey. Yeah, that should be everyone. Let's see who else joins. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm giving it a couple of minutes. I'm giving it a few minutes before everyone joins. I have tickets I want to go over, by the way. Um, I have a bunch of tickets I want to go over. So if you want to join right now, I'm going to send you the link right now. Just give me a second. So it should be, it should be this, um, the password, password is this. There we go, hey Steven. And let's see who joins, let's see who joins, let's see what happens. So. And feel, we'll see who joins right now. Nine people are on right now. All right, cool. I just sent the link just now. So just join the Zoom meeting. If, you, if, you, if you're gonna participate, join the Zoom. Obviously, um, you know, obviously for a warning, if, you, if you're participating, you're gonna be recorded. This is a recording. So you will be, you know, you will be a little toy. It's a, it's to help my the camera. See how the camera is not zooming in. So I basically I, I I get the toy, I put it on my face, and then I put it on the camera, and it zooms in, zooms out. Um, if you guys are ready, just join. I know people are wanting to join, so join. I appreciate what you do for us. Thanks. Waiting for you guys to join. Unless you want me to just talk the entire time, when I can't do that. If you want. I'm just kidding. I'll probably bore you to death if I if I talk the entire time. Uh, Steven is joining. Okay. 
Why can I not hear you? I don't hear anything. What the? See you, man. Hey, how's it going? Good. Oh, there you go. I was like, why can't I not hear you? Yeah, I didn't click on the little thing there. Sorry. My bad. How you doing, man? What's going? Yourself? I'm good. I'm good. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, the earlier routing is going on. That's, you know, what's going on? I'm on, I'm on, I'm on call this week, but oh, yeah, yeah, but um, it's all good, right, you know. Up again. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had to do a video, so usually when I do those, those interview, those yeah. interview videos, I like to be dressed appropriately, you know. So that's why. Check out this mayhem! Look at this! 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 Look at this. He put everything over from the everywhere. It's crazy. Great! He causes bridges and. <sighs> yeah, drive me nuts. That's what he's doing. Right, it's a, he's a kid, man. We're like we were we, we were like that when we were kids too. I yeah. guess so. Yes. So. Being three years okay. old, yeah. There you go. What? Yeah. So I I have um I have some tickets I want to go over, but I'm waiting for more people to join. Then I'll start going over the tickets. Um. And I'll get, yeah, it's, I'll, a, it's a beautiful day here. On, it's a little tough that they get people on here. Yeah, it's too nice outside, man. It's yeah, nice. it's like 73 degrees up here. It's beautiful. I, um, I'm on call this week, but the thing is, is that, oh, so hi, Fuzz is joining. I'm on call, I'm on call this week, but the thing is, is that, um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be busy for me because we already took care of all that, you know, the migration, remember that migration we had, that like we took care of most of it. So it's just like, it's not going to be busy because of the migration because we already handle most of the problems that they're having. But you know what? You know what? They're like, they're like Kevin, Kevin's going to take a break right now from migrations. And I'm like, I'm like, yes. And then they email me. They're like, we have, we have a 150 migration. <laughs> Another one. I'm like, good Lord, man, help me. <laughs> so, hey, Eddie. Yeah, that's the easiest yeah. second time. Hey Eddie, how are you? Hey Eddie. Hey guys, how are you? Hey Aifa. Hey Aifa. Yeah, so they they uh they're like yeah, so we now we have to migrate another company that we recently brought, and uh, Kevin, you're gonna be involved in it. And I'm like, God damn it, stop involving me in these migrations, please stop. <laughs> but one day when you become manager, you'll be involved in every single migration. That's yeah, it. but it's just like, um. It's, it's fine, you know. I'm not gonna. It's not gonna bother me. It's just that we're like super busy. Like, like we, I thought I was gonna be able to, to get a break, you know, like get a break from everything and actually relax. But I, I we have a bunch of projects going into the end of the year, so it's just, you know, it's too much. So at least you're busy with all this COVID stuff going on. At least you're yeah, that's true. That is yeah. true. I mean, that is true. Yeah, that's true. All hey, Eddie, not home, doing nothing. And what's up, hey, man? Can I do news on a job? Oh, hey, Eddie, how are you? Hello, Haifa. What was that, Haifa? 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 How do you pronounce it's it? Haifa, by the way. It's like, hey. So, oh, hey. Hey. Like, uh, hey to someone. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Haifa, like, like, like uh, I don't know, high five? I don't know, whatever, Haifa. No, um, people used to call me high five. I used to get so angry. <laughs> high five. Uh, <laughs> Any news on our job, Stephen? Um, yes, I have news. I was hired this past week. I got hired at a place this past week for. Uh, Congratulations! Yay. All right, sorry. I'm gonna keep clapping. Wait, 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 wait. Oh shit! He's gonna dance. Gonna dance. <laughs> Thanks. And I All started. Right, there we go. Right. I started on June 29th. There we go. Um, Congratulations! For, That's thank, awesome. Thank you. It's working for HCL, um, and the project that I'll be on is working with Black and Decker, a local company here. So. I start there as a desktop support technician, All right. level two. Yay. I call it. So Yay. yesterday I spent the day filling out paperwork. What fun that is! I'm, first time oh I had. Oh my a god, really, that sounds like so much fun. But you know, it's the first time I had a really full time job, like a full time <laughs> job, like not a contractor position, but a full time job, ever since 2008. So. Wow. 
I forgot how much paperwork and all the <laughs> old junk you had to go through. Oh yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of paperwork. I you know. Need, need your Social Security. You need to direct deposit. You want my first you need to born send son. Right. Forms. Yeah. yeah. Go, go, everything. Go, go. I yeah, know. everything. But uh, yeah. we'll wait and see what happens here. I mean, you know. I'm 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 happy you got for you. This. Man. I'm you happy. Steven, I thought you had a job already. You remember the, the whole virus, the, the whole the whole virus thing? It, yeah. it, it had to let go people because the whole virus thing. Because I was working for the hospital, and yeah. the uh, when my my agency I was a contractor, and they well, put it put it the wrong way. Um, and then they laid off nine, uh, nineteen guys in one day. So and that kind of yeah, that's insane. But we were yeah. contractors. We were not with the actual company. We were mm -hmm. contractors for them. But we were doing everything that the real employees were doing. Mm -hmm. But when the hammer came down, we discussed that. Yeah, it it that sucks it. because when you're when you're when you're a contractor, Eddie, when you're a contractor, the, the, the ones that'll get rid of first is the people that are contractors. Mm -hmm. They won't get rid of the full time employees because they're already part of the company full time and they already have benefits. Mm -hmm. They might they may have a union as well. So some of these companies have a union. So you can't just fire someone on the spot like that. If they're in a within the company, but if you're a contractor, you're an independent contractor. You're working with a third party, with a job recruiter or something like that, and you're a contractor, then they'll get rid of you first because that it, you have a you have a legal buying agreement with the recruiting firm that you can get fired anytime. It's a it's a file. It's a paper you sign. You know. So I would say it depends what company you work for, but most companies they will let go of. Um, uh, when you work in these big companies or small companies. They're gonna let go of people in IT first because IT doesn't make money. IT mm -hmm. doesn't make money. We maintain that technology, but we don't make money. We don't do automation or any of that. So if the company, like if it's an MSP company, obviously they're not gonna let go of anyone. But if it's a company that doesn't make money at all with technology, they're gonna get rid of technology first. So like you'll have like literally you'll have like IT support, like five people in IT support. And they'll knock out like three or two or four of them. Just so they can have two people still doing IT support, but then you know they get killed by it, you know, they get bombarded with it. So it does happen in IT. So hey Michael. Hey you guys, I'm hey, going you know. to step away for a bit and come back. But my family's calling from overseas. Yep. I'll be back. Yep. Yeah, so look, when you when you have those contract jobs, it, it's a little tricky, you know? A little tricky. Very yeah. what it is. So hey Donish. Hey y'all, how are you? How are you? Donish in the house. <laughs> The boss is here. We all have to behave now. Yeah, right. we gotta behave now. Let me let me put my tie back on. Give me a sec. I'm gonna go put my tie. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me make sure that my my uh, my my uh, suit and everything is on right now. <laughs> <laughs> How's everything? How's Eddie? How are you, Steven? How are you? I'm hanging okay. in. Where's, where's my fire? It's it's it, it's a pretty you know it's a really nice day out here. What's it like there in Maryland? Nice. It's it's actually nice. It's chilly, but it has a sun outside. So yeah. I I actually wanted to sit outside, but then I was like, man, it's gonna be hard on the phone. Just when this thing is finished, I'm just gonna go yeah. outside and just sit down. And I'm just gonna be like, yeah, I know. It's <laughs> I'm already tired from yesterday because I I finished my five days training and my back is hurting, man. It's like I, I got a little cushion. You can see right here. So nice. I got to rough. Make it's it. rough like getting old, huh? It's rough getting old. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I'm there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that uh, Steven is a veteran. Let me clean my uh, table in a few seconds. I got Steven's a, a veteran in IT. So I, I received a lot of resumes yesterday, Kev, uh, Kev Tech, for tomorrow. There's uh, about uh, 20 oh. resumes, and we will smoke every resume. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Steven, you're, you're joining tomorrow, right? Tomorrow? What time? Two o'clock, uh, two p.m. Two p.m. EST, EST time, Eastern time. Sure, I should be able to join tomorrow. You're, yeah. you're, you're a part of the panel. You gotta sit. We gotta ask a question. <laughs> people will. In, in, this is like a mock interview, right? People. It's a mock ask, interview. You gotta ask technical yeah. questions or yeah, so, personality questions. So okay. basically, so basically, I have some of the questions. Kevtech have some questions. If you can come up with some questions, it doesn't matter. So tomorrow is gonna be like a long day. The reason for that is that if there's multiple people, everybody will respond to the same question. The the benefit of this is Stephen that we're going to get some really good answers, right? Even though we know there are some good answers that we can give people, but it's always good to hear from other people that they can come up with something, something better than us. And this way, let's say, for example, we ask this question, what is your, 
uh, uh, tell me about yourself and you know why did you choose to apply for this job? That's like one of the questions I'm definitely going to ask. There you go. There's a cheating right there. But but let's say we get an answer for let's say five, six, or seven people, right? We're not going to immediately respond to that in a way that like okay, do, do we like this answer or not? We all are going to take notes to ourselves basically. So my idea behind this is this: that KevTech may uh, after the video, we're going to do a kind of like a, we're going to pause and we're going to get together. The panel is going to get together and we're going to decide who did well and kind of discuss our notes, basically. But we are not going to go into extreme detail of, OK, this is the perfect answer. So let me talk about it. because then, of course, that's going to be like 24 hours right there. So we're not going to get into that. So my idea behind this is this, that we're going to make the first round like that. Then you have the video. KevTech have the video, I have the video, right? Everybody have different, different opinions on the answer. And the reason for that for me is especially that because I have members that follow the way I give them internship hours and everything. So my answers might be different than a normal generic answer. So I don't want to confuse people. So definitely what we can do is after that, I'm going to basically take that video and kind of analyze every single answer. And I'm going to make videos on every question that uh, that video may be let's say, tell me about yourself, maybe one video for 15 minutes. And imagine I will have like, let's say 15 or 16 or 20 videos based on just interviews. So if I can finish this project, I feel like in future, we will never talk about interviews anymore for the entry level. Why? Because we, we will go through in such a detailed way that I feel like nobody have done that on the YouTube and it's not even in the blogs or anywhere. This is, this is not something that has been done before, by the way. So, so we're going to do this. We're going to come together and those type of questions will be with you guys too. And you guys can come up with your suggestions, maybe make your own videos on top of that. And we co collectively work inside the Discord community and share that with everybody. So then they can pick and choose what's best for them. Maybe my answer that is for the members may not apply to somebody who have no experience and doesn't want to take my courses, right? They're not, they're not forced to do that. And maybe they don't like the answer that KevTech given because maybe they feel like that's not the way I want to give the answer. Maybe they like your answer. So this way, we will have a very collective way to give this to the community. And at the same time, we're going to learn from these people too, because I really want to know what other people, what other minds think about this, tell me about yourself type of questions, behavioral type of questions. And that gives us at the same time a value too. So it's like a, it's both ways. We are helping them, they're helping us. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's going to be like different opinions because there's, there's more than one way to answer a question. So it's good to have input from everybody, if that makes sense. So super, super duper important. And uh, Eddie, you want to say something? Or you want to say something? Yeah, where, where I'm, do I send my resume to support at jobskillshare.org? No, yes. no, 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 that, that was so, a joke. Uh, sorry, 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 no. That was a joke. You don't, guys, don't send your resume. We already know that you applied for inter-level position, basically. That's that was just like a kind of like a joke. That I have. <laughs> so you, we are whoever joined this mock interview session tomorrow, we already know you're prepared for the entry level position. If you're not prepared, I feel like you shouldn't. Oh, you're just, uh, you shouldn't be answering these questions out of the blue, because of course, we're going to totally say that to you that you're not prepared. And again, this is to, to the people do not take this on, uh, on, like, do not take this personally. If we say that you didn't do well, that doesn't mean that you're not going to get a job, right? That's just that this company that we are the panel of, maybe we didn't accepted it because we're, we're training this stuff right we're not going to be lenient on you as well we're not going to be oh yeah that's fine tell me about yourself and you give me like a story from your childhood you fight with somebody and if you went back and you fight them back and if you're going to tell me that of course something like you failed you or tell me about yourself right yes yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta you know basically it's gonna be all tight it's gonna be technical and personality questions it's gonna be very interesting because we get to see how everyone responds to the same question and it's going to be a different answer for everyone you know and it's going to help you out because you may not like my answer, so then you could use Donish's answer. You may not like Donish's answer, you could use Steven's answer. You may not like Steven's answer, you could use somebody else's answer, you know? So yeah. you have more than one way, you have more than one way to attack the question and answer it, you know? So it gives you a solution to the answer, the question that they're asking you. So that that's basically what it is, you know? So it's good. It's good. It's going to be good participation with everybody, so... And anybody who is who are asking, um, like what time we shared all this this type of information in our Discord community. So if you're not a part of our Discord community, I'm putting that link right there. And if you want to, if you want to get a little cheating going on, go to Discord community and go check out the interview 
uh, channel inside Disco community. I feel like 70% of your behavioral questions are all going to come uh, from there and it's already there. Even the technical part is already there. So there's always a preparation for something, right? So you still have some time to go ahead and just look at these questions very quickly. We may we may go or some of it later on if Kev, if Kev is feeling about it. So because that's his kind of like life stuff. So I don't want to take over this stuff. So just if we have time, we're going to go over some of the questions just to show you or just at least the, the Discord community, not questions. And I made I made a video today too, actually. Me answering I interview questions. I made one video today. Yeah, so and, that, and those type of videos go where? That's the same collaborative channels that we have. And it goes to, I'm putting his videos in, in a sequence that it makes sense over there, right? And I'm making, so basically the way I'm, I'm putting a video um, inside the Discord is like this. Somebody sent a message that I went for a job. I went to this job, right? And can I share my screen quickly? Hey, go ahead, much, go ahead. It's, much, it's much better to do share, it. That share, way. share Discord too, because people don't know what that is. Okay, let me let me do that right now. So, guys, if you guys are watching, I'm gonna quickly share my screen. Just give me one second. And you know, you know what it is too. You know what it is is that people keep messaging me and emailing me. I'm like, just go to Discord and ask me a question there. I'm always on Discord. You don't have to go into, you know, you don't have to email me. You can just ask me a question on Discord because I'm on Discord right now. So. I yeah, I mean, do honestly, that. it's it's easy for us to share things. I mean, to be honest, we've been doing this for a long, long time. And I can tell you, it's not easy to do things on YouTube, like answering people with with uh, something more beneficial, like, you know, like document sharing, image sharing. It's not easy. YouTube has a ratio in there, right? It's like four by zero or something like that. Right, Kev? Mm -hmm. And you have to really mm -hmm. like cut down your images. I'm, oh, come on, who, who got that kind of time, you know, to do this kind of stuff? So. Um, all right, so this is a Discord community. If you guys are watching, um, this is what where we are right now. We we created this channel for. I don't see Discord on there. Where is it? I see your screen, but I see a black screen. Uh oh, sorry. It was paused. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job. So this is it was paused actually. So now it should be it should be showing right now. There we go. Okay, so guys, if you are looking at my screen right now, if you join the Discord community, go to the welcome intro section right here and make sure you introduce yourself like in a detailed way. Steven is there, everybody introduced themselves and there are new people, they sometimes introduce themselves with details and that's really give us opportunity to help you directly. Okay, we know where you're coming from. What's your background? I think you match with this type of learning or this type of video or this type of resource, whether it's free, whether it's paid, that's your decision to make. And you coming back over here, you see we, we put everything in a sequence, how to start learning, video courses, IT career advice tips. So this is where me and KevTech collaboratively work and Steven is coming soon also in there and anybody who is like a part of our, uh, you know, uh, group and they wanna help out each other. This is where we come together and we start helping each other out. So my career advice tips are gonna be limited to my experience. So of course, then when KevTech comes over here and he share his advice, we, sh we share that in one area. So you got the, you got everything in one spot right here. So we have separate channels, but at the same time, we work together to come together and use this one place to help each other out. So if you come over here, um, everything is in a sequence. So if you wanna get more confidence, of course, you're gonna go to the success story and you will see some of the good success stories. And I will recommend KevTech to share his uh, side of success stories over here. So then it makes kind of like uh, more sense. So here's what I'm talking about for tomorrow. This is what KevTech is explaining right now. He just made this video about the interview questions, but this interview question video is related to this whole, uh, you know, uh, back and forth that we had with this user, right? The user started over here. I applied to a job. And then of course I, I talked to, I started my learning and this is what I where I am. Then I got the job. So if I click on here, you see, this is where we put everything in sequence. So he got the job. He responded back with, interview questions to KevTech and I. So I went to KevTech, I'm like, you're gonna make videos, why should I make a video? Let's just make sure you make first. If you miss something, I'll make a video, right? On top of that, so we're saving our energy at the same time. So here you go, you got you got users, you got all the questions, you got everything from this user shared with us. And then on top of that, KevTech made, started making videos to answer you back. I feel like this is more than any training, to be honest. Like I have done trainings for years right now. and if you know how to use this type of, uh, you know, this type of uh, communities, it's more than that, right? This it's just a it's just a passion behind this stuff. There has no value behind this stuff. There's no money involved in this stuff. It's it's all done for free right in front of you. All you gotta do is to just go there, 
put your email and register and get involved in something like this. So this is where you got to be in there. And this is the interview sections. If you really go over this stuff right here, this is the, this is the interview questions shared with you already. So if you look at this one, two, three, four, five, almost 10 questions, there you go. You, you go to any interview, I can guarantee you at least there are going to be three interview questions, behavioral questions right from here. It doesn't matter which interview you go in, in, in IT, you're going to get at least three questions. Probably not the same wording. It's going to be exactly the, like the, mm -hmm. the, the question is going to be exactly the same. Okay. So that's, I wanted to quickly share that. The link is in the chat and um, all you got to do is to join. Okay. I'm going to sh stop sharing this right now. Is it, would it be easier for me to just go to Discord and find you or for you to invite me? I already shared the link. You just click on the link and it's automatically going to put you in the channel. So okay. if you if you look, uh, okay, maybe I didn't share in the Zoom chat. Hold on. I see a Zoom link. No, 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 not Zoom. So if are you are you watching oh, the yeah. YouTube chat too? No, but I'm on your page. I see it. It says if you are on Discord, please join us at https discord.gg. Yeah. That's you. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, let me let me send it in the Zoom chat right there too. I put it in in Zoom chat as okay. well. So all you got to do is to click on it and just put your email and you're going to get, um, you're going to log in there. Okay. Man, I was making, uh, the technical side of this, uh, interview stuff is <laughs> some of it is not easy, man. I was like, Hmm, if you have a lot of people, we're going to have a problem. The only, the only thing that I'm, I, I'm going to do for a future is when you ask a question, like tell me about yourself and there's like more people then uh, we need a way for people to like send their messages after your question, like in, in a group manner, but nobody's hearing it. Like, let's say, I say, tell me about yourself. So Kevtech is talking on his phone. Steven is talking about his phone. <laughs> that would have made so much sense. But uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe for learning, I think it's way better than what we are doing right now. Because it's going to be like one question, second question, third question, fourth question. And everybody will be like listening to it the people who are going to be learning that and even the people who are just actually explaining this stuff or are preparing themselves this is going to be really good for them to hear different people different wordings it makes more sense uh, when you go to the interview because you, you may find a very good word right that that's kind of like right. more grammatically correct and because we myself i myself have a this problem with grammar and what which word should i use to impress people so you may hear something from other people that are way better than you right Yep. All right, you guys are ready for tickets? Anyone? Eddie? Oh. I pick, uh, I keep, I pick yeah. on Eddie all the time. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. Eddie? yeah. Eddie looks unsure. Are you sure, Eddie? Well, You're no, ready? because I'm I'm blogging on. I'm. It's not that I'm unsure. I'm I'm on a dis. I'm uh. What do you call it? I'm creating an account on the uh, Discord it's thing. That's all. I mean, if you if you have a date to go to, let me know. You know. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, I'm just signing up on Discord. <laughs> I'm also gonna share this in uh this right here. All right, let me share my screen. Okay. All right. Obviously, obviously, everyone that watches my videos on YouTube, blah blah blah. You know, there's no such thing as a bad answer. We don't scream and yell at people. You know, if you have a wrong answer, you know, obviously, you know, you know, we'll go over it, you know? So there's no such thing as a good answer. There's no such, like there's a good answer, but there's no such thing as a bad answer. You know, we don't we don't criticize you if you're if you if you answer incorrectly. So hopefully that, that you know that makes sense. All right. Um I'll let Eddie Eddie pick a pick a ticket, any ticket. Which ticket do you want to do? Um uh, I don't know. Let's start at the, let's start at the top. Okay. Blue jeans meeting. All right. Good afternoon. I have a blue jeans called later today with a client. Can someone please install it on my machine? I know the company uses Zoom, but we need to use blue jeans for this client. It hasn't been tested yet. Can someone do a test call with their IT team? What do you His think? Vice president. Yep. What is blue jeans? Is that some sort of um, video conferencing thing like Zoom? Yes. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. obviously there's no such thing as a perfect answer but like 
basically he wants blue jeans and he wants to install it and it has not been tested yet. So what will be your, well, how would you troubleshoot it or how would you set it up or what would you do? Okay, since I never used this application before, I would say you first got to get, um, you first got to see if it's being, if you can even install it with inside of your organization. I was gonna say, I was gonna say don't we need to the find out thing, if we need they, approval first, don't we? Yeah. From mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Other than that, I'm kind of lost because I don't know anything about blue jeans. I just, I would think, like I said, I only know, I think I, I only know the first part, which is uh, we would have to get approval from a You got approved. Or the IT director. He's, he's our VP, so. So let's say you got approved. Okay. What will you do next? I would, I would have to, uh, I'd have to test it maybe in a, on a VM, see if it works. VM? Make, make sure it doesn't crash the system or whatever. You would, would you, would you test it on a VM or would you test it on a computer that you're using or something like that? I would use it, I, I would use it on a VM. Right. If I use it on my system and it doesn't work, it's going to crash my computer. Yeah, but Andy, what happens if you don't have a VM close to you? I mean, if you just oh. have a spare computer close to you, you can try it. Mm -hmm. But then again, I mean, Kev, I mean, with this one, I, I, th I think I would, I would agree. I would, well, I would agree with both. It's, it's if you have the VM, why not, right? Okay. Right, but but be realistically, how many when you walk into your uh, your sites, how many VMs you have sitting beside your desk? How many VMs do they allow you to even to hook up to? Yeah, this, this would be this would totally depends on where he work and right. you know, like I like I said, some some like for example, if you're not sure about a software, it's a brand new software, right? It's totally brand new, and you got approved with that software. You are a new technique. You are a new technician, so I feel like it's okay. It's an it's an okay answer. Why? Because if you have a if you're totally new, you may don't want to mess up something on your computer that you don't know what is totally about mm -hmm. right okay it, wouldn't you be more safe than sorry if you just say install something and that kind of like messed up a little bit or you don't you don't know about too much about the software and it's it's a little extensive software it's just in, install something more than what you're looking for right and you're not you're not too sure you're too new to this stuff yeah. it's it's still going to confuse the hell out of you right so my 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 take on this is that if you have the vm then it's better to be safe than sorry what i'm mm. saying right yeah and if there's a better option than that if you don't have vm then of course there's no other way you gotta you gotta, you gotta go and search what the software is maybe go to documentation that's the first thing you should do because if it's brand new brand new software what would you do for zoom let's say for example if somebody say i want you to install zoom but i want you to install the msi version of it right of course you gotta go to a documentation of that to get that msi from zoom and not some random website and get hacked or something, right? So that's where I, I would say that would go. But Keftek, what do you? What's your answer on this? The, like I said, same thing with what you said. Depends on the environment. Obviously, if, if I have a, a spare laptop, cause some companies they ha yeah. they give you a spare laptop you could test stuff on, like production and stuff like that. I would install it on that spare laptop, not my computer, a spare laptop, and then I would try to run it and install it, and then see if it works. If it does work, um, I want to see if I could do a test call with the other company that he's working with. Because I don't know if we are, you know, when, you, when you're doing video calls, sometimes we block certain things that go in and out. So you don't know if the call is going to work if you call someone out of the office. So I would do a test call with their IT department and then see if it works. And if it does work, then after that, we could schedule the call for uh, Mark, the person on the ticket. And he should be good to go after that. And obviously, I would install it on his computer. And then prior to, I would install it on his computer. Prior to going to set up the meeting on his computer, I would do it like 20, 30 minutes beforehand with their IT team with me together with them. And I would hook it up and set it up. So I'm talking with their IT team. I installed them. I installed it from work already. I installed it from work already. So I would take his laptop, his computer, um, do the test call with, with, with the IT team department, the IT department, and we go back and forth. And then I'm like, hey, Mark, this is good to go. You go ahead and sit down. I tested the microphone. I tested the application. The video is up and running now. The camera is working. Now you could go ahead and have your meeting with whoever you're having a meeting with. That's what I would do. That's my answer. 
Someone say they tried in lab, not really VM. Well, VM is kind of your own personal lab. I'm, I mean, you're in 2020, right? Not a lot of people are, not a lot of people have their dedicated labs these days. Like you don't go to a lab room all the time now to test something. This is why we have more RAM that are cheap now, more systems that are fast now. Back in the days, yes, this was not something that people would be like, okay, I, have, I need a lot of a, a, a pretty powerful computer to have VMs, but now, we have VMs all over. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, if you don't have it, I mean, you should get it then. If you, were, if you want to become a better IT professional, you should con concentrate on having some type of VM, uh, you know, VMs around you because that's where you're going to learn more. That's where you're going to practice more on your own too. Because there are in the labs, even in the labs, labs are set up in certain ways that other people are also using it. So you can't just go around and just blow the whole lab like that, you know, inside of your company, unless you have your own hmm. personal lab in your home. That, that that's that's how I would answer this question. So basically, I get I get manager approval first. Once I get the approval, I install it on a on a on a spare laptop. Then I do a test call with IT. Then I know that it's working. I'll do the test call with Mark's computer thirty minutes beforehand because he's gonna have a meeting. I don't know what day he's gonna have a meeting, and I'll do it the thirty minute thirty minutes beforehand. I I'll schedule a call with their IT team and, and do it on his computer to make sure it works, and then make sure that that the person that they're connecting with make sure their computer works as well. And then make sure the camera is working, the mic is working, make sure everything is working. And then you can just have them sit there and do their meeting afterwards. And obviously, I would, I would, if it, if it's, if obviously if it's remotely, it's different. But if they're like right next to you, I would stay in that meeting for five minutes and then, or a couple of minutes, make sure they're okay. And then I just walk away after that. That's basically how I would set up that meeting. So. You know, too, I think the, you know, the important thing with this one, I don't, you know, for me, okay, it says vice president. I don't care if he's the president of the United States. I mean, you still need to go through your channels to make sure that, because if you go to put this thing on Mark's machine and all of a sudden the IT security guy goes, what did, what did, you know, what did you just do? Well, I put this blue jeans program on this machine. Why? It's not even a, a approved program. It was never tested in our network. Where are you getting this thing from? Even though it does say vice president, you still got to be very, very careful. I mean, you need to go to somebody higher than you going, this guy wants it, the vice president wants it on. What should we do? And then we leave it in the manager's hands going, all right, you go and talk to the people you need to go talk to. Come on back to me and tell me what I can do for this guy. Because if he needs to be on the call today, that may go through some channels, but your manager may be able to talk to somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can get, yes, go ahead and and put it on for Mark today, take it off, and maybe we'll have to see how we can implement this into our network if we're going to start using blue jeans all of a sudden. I mean, you just can't go yeah. put all these. That's what I was saying. You need manager uh, approval for that. Right. You, you got to be careful, everything. though. I agree. You be very, very careful, though, guys. I mean, yeah. blue jeans. I mean, you just say blue jeans. I mean, I've seen it up at CNA. I'm like, what is that application? Oh, it's with uh, Cisco. I'm like, they want to jabber at one time. I'm like, what is that? I never heard that before. Well, we need it for, you know, for this afternoon. I'm like, well, we need to go through approvals. I said, I just can't put this on. I said, I need to go and find out a little bit more about this, and then I'll get back to you. And by that time, I mean, the customer's all mad and all that stuff, but yeah, you're just you're just trying to cover your butt because if you do something wrong, that could, this thing could come back and bite you. Even though it is no. a vice president, who do you think he's going to stick up for? I, I agree I, with that. I agree with that totally, no. and that's where the, the, the policies and things are going to be, but sometimes de sometimes IT departments or the culture of that company, even in IT culture, is not like that, right? People people will either, in they, they will get to that point, Stephen and Kevin, you probably have experienced this, they will get to that point when they realize that there are multiple things going on. Let's say if they're using blue jeans and somebody else is using Zoom, somebody else is using groom, broom, broom, right? So whatever it is. So they're using like different, then they realize that, oh, we need a policy now, right? And that's where it, it gets to that point. But maybe let's say if Eddie found a job somewhere and that's not a kind of like a normal way, normal trend. Now, we're not gonna tell Eddie the bad way. The good way, Eddie, you always have to go. Uh, if you're not approval. sure, get approval, right? Yes. Uh, if you're not, like, if even if it's a white, like, just, just like what uh, Steve would say, even if it's a vice president, that doesn't mean mm. they they have the authority to just, hey, install anything for me. Why? Because- so, yeah. Donis, what happens too, if that, if that website is actually blacklisted? You yeah. have to go through the processes to get it whitelisted. Exactly. And you know how long exactly. that takes? That oh, yeah. could take days. 
until that happens. Go to security. All that kind of stuff. Yes. So you need to know the right person, the right, the right group to get you connected, just like that, and say, "All right, let them do it. Let them do it. Go for it. You know, and hopefully nothing happens." So all, all you have to you do. Know? is to kind of initiate the process. If the company, if they don't care about it, there's nothing you can do about it, right? It, if, it, if the culture is like that, you're not gonna make, because then you're not gonna become a problem either for the, that team. Why? Because you wanna get away from that too. You, you wanna get, you don't wanna get into politics of, you know, I am saying, oh, you should be done the correct way. Now you got a manager right there who, who, who don't even follow these rules, right? And now you got a problem right there. So. Play with the game, basically. Look, yeah. look what they're doing. Yeah, and it you says it, it says way. Zoom there. It says yeah. Zoom there. So why don't you just test Zoom with the client outside? I mean, they're using Zoom already. You want to test that too, like? Well, what happens if the client right is not using Zoom and they only use Blue Jeans? Right? Yeah, exactly. It goes back and forth. It goes so back and forth. you know, you always can't do that either because the other company's going. Well, we don't like use Java. We don't use Blue Jeans. We use Zoom. Okay. Well, can we find some other way to communicate? Uh, no, we use this. And all of a sudden, do you think the other sides, you know, the other side is going to bend? Not really. So you got two companies fighting each other going, I don't want to put this on my machine, you know, and then by that time, the day is over with and you got two bad people because they couldn't communicate. Mm -hmm. So this one's very, very tricky. It seems simple enough, but yeah. you got to be very, very careful because <laughs> especially today. Well, rare, you know rare, what? Yeah. You know what's funny about this ticket is that yesterday a friend of mine t calls me up and he goes, "Hey, uh, hey, I need I need your help and I need you over video conferencing and we always use Zoom." And he goes, "Oh, I want to use Google Meet." And I'm like, uh, "Okay, I've never used it before, but let's do it." 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, he can't hear me. He sees my video. We tried to troubleshoot it, couldn't get through. So it's kind of ironic that the first uh ticket i picked pertain to yesterday and i couldn't fix it we have to go back i said let's go back to zoom because i couldn't figure it out and i think i think i'm not sure but i had my bluetooth headphones on and i'm wondering if i needed to disconnect my bluetooth so that he could hear me i don't know i know this is for me hearing but we after 30 minutes man we gave up i said dude zoom works let's go to zoom but it's ironic that this ticket popped up first because it's the same thing that happened yesterday. And I couldn't get it. I couldn't get the Google Meets. Is it Google Meet or Meets? I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't get yeah, the Google yeah. Meet to work. I never heard that before either. What's that? Is, it, is that like a chatting program? Is that like yeah, it's like Google, hang, yeah. Google Hangouts. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, but the video quality was much better than Zoom's. I don't know why, but uh, the video came up pretty good. It was a higher definition. I, I don't know why, but it just, I was like, wow. The because video nobody video. uses it. Nobody knows about it except for you now. <laughs> I never heard about that until just now. How many people we got on YouTube? Am I going to get picked on all day? Not that I, I mind, but you know. No, not really. We can we can change the subjects. That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, I'll change the subject, yeah. I'm going to close out the ticket and we'll go to the next ticket. But yeah, it gets very complicated. It gets very, very complicated. Yeah, very complicated. Ticket. It's done. Manager approved it. Okay. Move on. Go to, the, go to the next one. All right. Desktop keeps crashing. My desktop is crashing two times a day. Every time I create a new email, my whole computer crashes. I need to force restart my PC to fix it. Can someone please check? Please check what's happening with my machine. Regards, Megan, HR, Human Resources. So what will you do with this one? So it says my desktop crashes every, my desktop is crashing two times a day. Every time I create a new email, my whole computer crashes. What do you think? Attention to details. Hmm. It could be a, it could mean a lot of things. You got to read it. So it says my desktop is crashing two times a day. Every time I create a new email, my whole computer crashes. I need to force restart my PC to fix it. Can someone check check what's happening with my machine? Megan HR. Well, should we ask other people working in that same department or same office? Ask her if other people are having the same issue or if this 
an isolated issue only with her machine. Would that be a good start? Well, if you are checking the ticketing system, I'm sure you're going to get more tickets like that from other people. But that, just look at it. I mean, it's something to do with crashing. So it could be an add-on, but I mean, something to do with it. But, but yeah, look, look, look at the email. Well, that's what Kev is saying, right? My desktop is crashing two times a day. Now, now pause, pause, and now concentrate. Every time I create a new email, my whole computer crashes. Now, let's, for example, say they are using Outlook, because right? mm -hmm. most of the people are using that, right? Mm -hmm. Just, just uh, kind of like adding something to help you. My email, because if you're working in the company, you already know what type of client they're using, right? That could be Outlook, could be other mm -hmm. things. So you already know that. So they say my email, well, every time I open the email, my computer crashes. Now, just kind of focus over here. What do you think? What do you think? because you got to start somewhere whether it's the issue or not you don't yeah. jump to issue directly because you don't know so at least you got to have something from the client or the customer so what do you have so far from the customer so you can at least start some process even for a customer service perspective right you you got to you got to start something in there right well we, i guess we would have to, uh i'd look at her uh email software whether it's uh if it's outlook Nuri say users lies, New users lies. Well, I mean, yeah, but if a user is saying not always, of course, if there's a, if there's an issue going on, let's say, for example, I open Zoom and my computer crashes every time I open Zoom. I'm not going to lie about that because you're going to come and you're going to do what? As a te technical person, you're, you're going to go and approach that person based on what they have given to you, right? You're not just going to go walk up there. Let me just take all your computer, let IP config, and let me just do some GP update command, right? You're not going to do that. Yeah. So you're going to have to start from somewhere. The customer already gave you information, and that's that's a good start. You need to just start somewhere, right? I don't know if I'm wrong. Kev Tech and Steven can tell me about well, that. Well, this is kind of an interesting one too, Kev. I mean, you're getting some interest being... It only, it's only when she's creating a new email. So she has it open and she's, um, oh, my kids go nuts. Um, she has it open and uh, she creates a new email and then it crashes after that. So she creates so the program opens. Probably. Yeah, it's already, Outlook is already open. So as long as she's in there, the, 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 the computer's not crashing. So, so when she, clicks on create a new email, it reboots. So, I mean, you could uninstall and reinstall Outlook, but I, I mean. Or if it opens up, if the application opens up, then just like what we are saying, maybe when you're clicking on the email, that is where things are happening and there's some type of add-on that is conflicting with it or something is happening right there. So you would use without reinstalling the whole outlook, you would you use what type of methods to at least say that, okay, let me just make sure that this is not an add-on. Uh, you can disable the add-ons and in, instead of outlook. Well, what, if you, can, what if you can't get to that point? Let's say you're opening up um, settings or it's still doing some kind of problems with you. I mean, what I would do in my, my case is just like this. If you, if you have outlook opening and running, maybe you should just run the safe mode command right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that will that will kind of like remove the the, the additional add-ons or anything and if it opens up and if it opens an email you already got the answer right there done no problem because now you can fix the issue if it's more than that of course there could be tons of different issues with it right you could look at event viewer maybe pull up and yeah that's what fiharo has also suggested that's of course then of course you are getting into more troubleshooting you, look there's no right or wrong answer over here you go to event viewer first. If you're that type of technical person that you can go to the event viewer and figure things out quickly like that, go ahead. But if you're brand new people, I can tell you 90% of the people would not even understand what's going on in the event viewer. That's just based on my yeah, own experience by teaching people, right? Because that's, that's how they don't even think like that. Like I've trained so many people, they don't even think to go to event viewer naturally. That's just a professional who has been involved in so many type of technical stuff that person understands that I can let me just let me just check the log right here let me just do that and then it can even get more advanced than that of course if this goes to level three or somebody who is really technical they may just open like sys internals or stuff like that and, and really capture every single event that's happening when you click on that 
open a new email and that will be extremely advanced stuff right there. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a question is quite, it's quite difficult for you to answer the answer this ticket because you don't know. You don't know. It. They're saying my desktop is crashing two times a day. Every time I create a new email, my whole computer crashes. I need to force for start my PC, right? So if you read this, if you read it, it says my PC crashes two times every time I create a new email, all right? You may say, you may think it's the whole computer, but it's probably not the whole computer. It's probably just the email that's crashing the computer and everything else is working. So you want to eliminate that first before you do anything. Obviously, you're not going to make them restart the whole computer. It doesn't make any sense. So you want to troubleshoot mm -hmm. and narrow it down first with email or an outlook first to see if that's the issue that's causing it. Because a client or a user or a person would say that the computer is crashing when in reality, it's not crashing. It's just outlook that's crashing. So you want to narrow it down and see if it's just outlook that's crashing first. And then you figure out that that's working now and it's not crashing anymore. It's, it was probably because of an outlook issue and that's it. And the computer's fine after that. So you don't know that. So you want to go through I wanna, that first. I wanna, I want to add something where some people are saying you do a quick repair. Now, remember, when it comes to Outlook troubleshooting, then you also want to make it like light troubleshooting versus heavy troubleshooting on Outlook. Like you don't want to be repairing the whole office and sit there for, let's say, another 30 minutes to do the whole repair on the office. That doesn't make too much sense to me right here. Why? Because you don't want to be breaking other things while everything is working because with that one repair that may cause some other issues. So the reason I went for safe mode command is the quickest way to quickly just find out, is this related to any add-ons or any other things that is not a part of this safe mode, right? That's what safe mode is built. So you quickly realize that, okay, Outlook is working. What's the next step? You move on to more and more deep. And somebody really nice put a nice comment out there. Don't go so deep in troubleshooting ahead of, don't assume things. And you assume, and then you go to deep troubleshooting, right? Um, this is going to save you too much time in, in, IT, in, in our IT world. And one of the things that we do is, of course, we forget to restart a computer. But in this case, if it's keep crashing, then, of course, there's an issue. Most of the time when we restart a computer, 80, 90% of the time, it doesn't never come back. And the user always asks, what happened? Yeah, yeah, you know, there was some kind of updates. You just, you throw something in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was some kind of updates. I had to re restart the computer. Security updates were, uh, you know, were pushed out. Oh, now everything is good to go, right? So you always get away with that. Hey. But, yeah. Go ahead, Kev. I was gonna say, I was gonna say that yeah, you wanna do you wanna narrow it down first and then do do um do the add-ins first, see if the add-in is crashing. There's always an add-in on Outlook, Excel, Word, all those doc, all those applications that work with Microsoft, typically they have an add-in associated with it. And, and maybe they installed an application and somehow it lingered around and installed an Outlook by accident. You don't know. So you wanna try out safe mode first on Outlook. Mm -hmm. Then after then after doing safe mode on Outlook. We're not going to run a repair. That doesn't make any sense. Why you want to repair? Because a repair takes about 20 to 30 minutes to repair and it forces you to close everything and then it forces you to restart your computer. So you wouldn't do that first. You want to do the, the basic troubleshooting stuff. So you basically disable the add-in, whatever. If it's an add-in, you want to make sure it's an add-in. Maybe it's not an add-in. Maybe it's a corrupted OST profile. Maybe you want to create a new Outlook profile and have them open up that one and see that fixes the problem. So you don't know. You want the you have to do the basic stuff first before running a repair. You can't just jump in and run a repair. It doesn't work that way. You yeah, have to G jump so, back. So, Fiharo, you're that's a correct answer. If I get a, even if, uh, okay, I'm, I'm also considering myself a, a newbie in this area too now because I don't work on this on a daily basis. So, of course, that's a normal way of doing things. You get an error, you go to what? You go to the Google. And that is, doesn't matter if you're a newbie, doesn't matter if you have 15 years of experience, we all go to Google. That's number one. Second thing is for Gino61, he has a really good point, but don't you have to ask the customer more questions? Now, when we do this stuff right here, Gino, we are kind of like going into more technical side because we're kind of like sharing our experience. So we already kind of like assume that you will do this part, right? So that's just going to be going there. A, a, a user has been also, you went in there to the room, you checked it or remote in, you asked all these questions. That's just a customer service part of troubleshooting process right you got you got to do that of course that's we all we all are it people over here we can assume that you already this is answered then we go into this technical side of it right i always but try got a really you, good point would you would you imagine me running a repair on someone's computer and wasting 20 minutes of their time and it doesn't work after restarting you know like you gotta look at that as well you know you gotta be uh -huh. careful with that yeah, yep, you yep, gotta yep. get annoyed and frustrated well, i think too that i mean when you walk up to the customer, I mean, if you can have them recreate it for you, so you can see it live, because some, I mean, what it, what they put it in, what it, what they put inside the ticket, word wise, that would be, be the first thing. And when I you walk up, you're like, yeah, it's not doing what the ticket 
did, whoever put this, you know, the help desk guy put the ticket notes in there. That's not what it's doing. You may explain them this way, but it's, that's not really the issue. It's something oh, else. So that's, that, that goes back to the doing. first comment that user lie. I don't think it's lying. It's that they don't know how to put it on the ticket yep. or explain it. Yeah. I mean, heck, yeah. sometimes we, we don't either. I mean, if you don't know everything about the operating system, you got to put in there going, oh, it, it was a service that crashed, an application. It, you just, you know what I mean? You got to make up something for the ticket. But if you kind of can narrow it down, I mean, we're not like coders. We can't say, well, that one and zero did not do what it was supposed to do. That's why nobody cares about that. Yeah. Hey, Danish, yes. were, were, are you saying, that? I didn't know that, um, that when you restart the computer in safe mode, it won't? load the add-ons to any program no not not restart outlook. the computer in same or outlook in same remember you learned in your training mm -hmm. they, in, in, <laughs> you're going to go to run command and you're going to type what command outlook space that's right what's that forward slash or backslash uh, forward slash, forward right? slash. and then uh what's that safe mode safe. no just safe. 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 Hey, Kev, why don't you bring that up for us and, yeah just oh, bring, that, bring that up and show it or show uh, it normal mode first and then show it in safe mode second okay. so, so so you can see the differences if you're paying attention, here's his headphones on. Can you hear us? Oh, probably he doesn't hear. But let me let me open it. Um, oh, he has a t he has a screen um, sharing right now. Yeah, you you're back. Hi, I know you probably work. Hey, can you share out that um, uh, the Outlook? Can bring up Outlook normally and then bring it up in safe mode so you can show the people at home what what the differences are of what takes place. If you could. If it takes you time, let me know. I, I can also open it. Yeah, Lonnie, no, sorry. I'm in the middle of a call. Give me a second. Okay, I'll open it. I'll, yeah. I'll take over. Is she, is she cute? <laughs> yeah, he's actually working today, you believe it? Oh. Actually, making some money on a Saturday. Overtime, overtime. Making Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? Who's that, Raj? Hey, Raj. How are you? Hey, Raj. Yeah, doing good, bro. How are you? Good. How's everything? Yeah, doing good. Yeah, based on the question, uh, I my way of doing it, I agree with the safe mode for that. That's a really good way. Is it possible you can delete the app data in Outlook? Is it sometimes app data could probably cause it to crash or something? Yeah, let me show you this. Um, I'm actually opening a machine right now. I, I want to think about you which know, machine I'm on. What else does safe mode make Outlook? not do in regular mode honest oh, do you know by any chance like what else is i don't it... i don't know too much details on this I mean, add-ons we know that right? it stops all the add-ons but i'm sure it lightens up the whole outlook but i i don't I mean, know exactly you the, lose, the ins i know that you so. lose your your views and everything else your, your customization with that you know but that would be more of the give me outlooks. a second guys i'm busy okay take your time kev so do you guys see my screen uh, uh, yeah, bro. Yes. Yes. So of course, uh, here you're gonna come over here. Probably already did this before. So there you go. So this is the command right here. Um, if you're having, first of all, let's talk about the issue here. Let's say you open Outlook, and I don't probably have Outlook configured. Uh, probably no, I don't have yet. So let me see if I can add something in here. DMV. What do I have here? DMV. Find sa dot on Microsoft. By the way, where am I connecting, Eddie? You should know this. Man, I right now, uh, I I cannot. I only see like one quarter of your screen. Really? Oh Can wait. Guys... Oh no. I zo I zoomed in. Sorry. I I, I have hold on. Hold on. Let me fix it right here. Let me. No, fix no. It. it was my fault. I uh, I have it on uh, Zoom. Can you guys see my screen now? You I'll show this one hundred. Okay, this is better. I'm sorry. What was the question? Well, the question was that where am I connecting right now? When I use that email, what do you think? Is that a local exchange server email or where is it coming from? Uh, that, I don't think that's local, right? That's on the cloud. That's on the cloud. What is it called? Office Is that the? He just answered it. Who did me? Uh, Office 365 Office right 365? there. Office 365? Yes, sir. So that's Office 365. You log into where's the Office 365? Where's it coming from? Because I have access. What? Portal. Who am I? Right here. Admin. Admin. This is the admin. You learned about this. If you yep. don't remember, make sure you go back to day three, I guess. Look on the video. Right. And look into that whole training. So yeah. this is where it's coming from. If I add a users over here, then I go to that computer. 
And basically I can uh, get into my lab here and connect to my Office 365, okay? That's not your, when people ask you, do you know about the Outlook? Uh, how do you track email in Office 365? They're specifically talking about cloud tracking. They're not talking about anything local over here. Do not give any answers that I, okay. So when they talk about Office 365, don't just say that I know about Word, I know about PowerPoint, I know about Excel. There you go. You don't know about Office 365 Then if somebody asks you a specific question like that. And, and that two of my members did that mistake and didn't get a job because they say that I know about Office 365. I have done my training. When they ask them a question, can you track an email inside Office 365 I'm talking about? Yeah. They start talking about, oh yeah. So I, I will open my Outlook inside my, my computer and then I will look for an email. Now that, that's that's not an answer, right? That's desktop outlook right there, right? Because you're going to go to the admin side of it, do all the thing right there. So, okay, we're gonna, oh, why did I click on that? Okay, so now let's say that a situation that Kev is explaining right now, he's saying that you open the outlook right here and then what happened is this, that it's gonna crash immediately when you open the new email not anything else it's working the person opens it up right there everything is working fine and you come over here um and you open like the new email right there sorry i'm clicking on the wrong places man come on let's slow. okay so i click on the new email right here and then boom computer crashes right there right so you at least have the chance to get to this point and troubleshoot even before this point meaning you're not opening the email you went to the user, different methods, right? You logged into the user account by remote, uh, using some kind of shadow remoting like SCCM or some other type of remoting like what Kev is using or maybe Steven Baumgart, whatever that call it, the thing is. Zuho Assist, right? So many different uh, way to get into that machine when the user is talking and what's going on. Or you zoomed into a client machine that is working in in UK, right? So those are different skills that are getting in, in like you're, you're using different skills to actually troubleshoot the issue. You got in there, you see a user showed you, everything is fine, no problem. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I click on this, my computer crashes, right? Or you could be in the office and you see everything is happening in front of you. So what we're saying is that the idea behind this is that, yes, you can go into logs if you know how to do that, go to Event Viewer and check the logs if you can. But to me, okay, let's see if there's a quick way. Can I really... Can I quickly uh, basically see if the Outlook is going to be performing the same way when I open it in a safe mode? That, that's what they gave us to, to troubleshoot Outlook in most cases. So basically, you will close the Outlook like that, and you're going to go to run, and you're going to type basically the Outlook forward slash safe right there. As soon as you hit that, what's going to happen? It's going to open Outlook in a safe mode. So basically, what will happen is that so it's going to open up like that, right? So let's say, for example, you went out there, it's in the safe mode, um, and then you, you, you go here and you click on new email. And let's say the email opened up. You, you already got the point right there that this has to do something with that, either add-on or anything else that sometimes, uh, so Stephen, you asked me, what else does it do? I remember one day, my, I was working with a client, and for some reason, they had this calendar set to some other calendar other than like Office 365. It was set to some other web server or server like that that gives the calendar options or something. So it would it would try to sync in. Every time somebody would open Outlook, it would try to sync into that calendar and it would not work. And I could not figure it out for like a few days to be honest, because I did everything and I felt like, and I actually didn't apply this safe mode because you know, like I said, we may be working in this type of environment, but that doesn't mean that I would be so perfect that I will always remember what to do here. I forgot to use this command. I tried different things. I was like, maybe I'll rerun the whole, uh, you know, uh, the profile and everything. None, none of that stuff worked for me. Came over here, basically run that command. And I noticed that it did not show up that syncing, basically, that specific syncing to the other mm -hmm. server. So we can do more research on this, that what else does it disable, Stephen? But in that case, it didn't do anything. It basically didn't even touch that syncing. So I realized that, okay, there's something going on because I'm not seeing that pop up anymore. So I was looking at all, all of my changes in there and I would not see that in the safe mode. I realized that, okay, that's an issue. So I went into the settings, remove all that syncing, whatever that was done, customized way, whatever that was removed it, restart the Outlook, sorry, restart the Outlook, boom, everything is working fine. Does that make sense? Um, 
But then after this, of course, you got many other methods, right? You're going to come over here, see what else, what kind of issues are this person having and stuff like that. Now, one of the things that uh, Raj talked about, which is something that uh, I call this a master fix, but it does come with its own disadvantages as well, right? Something like if somebody's used to Outlook for, let's say, 10 years or five years, right? Or maybe three years, they have done a lot of customization to their Outlook, even the views. You know how some people in accounting or directors, they love certain type of views on, on Outlook, right? And then when you refresh something like that, when you remove the whole folder like that, what happens? All your customization in those app data folders goes away with that, right, Raj? So then you got an angry customer that, oh, I spent so much of my time to create this special view for myself and now I don't have it. So here you go. As a new person, you also need to actually go in there and kind of see if this person has something special going on. Ask them. If they don't, warn them that if I have to go for my master fix, I, you may lose certain uh, you may lose certain searches or uh, some history inside of that outlook. Not email. You're going to warn them ahead of time. You're not going to lose any email. Don't worry about it. But I'll show you what you need to be doing in this case. So the easy method to get to that app, app data folder, by default, app data folder is what? Can anybody answer me? App data folder is by default what? Hidden. Hidden. So the, the easy way is that not to go and try to unhide stuff because that's, I was doing that for a while and then I figured out, okay, that's not a real, real good way. So you're gonna go to where? Control panel. Let's just go to control panel. Okay. So you go to control panel, you open it out. So here's the thing. How would I get to my mail settings over here? This is a very common thing that you always have to do in this when you go to control panel. So Eddie or anybody remembers? The, uh, I was going over to category and do large icons. We got to change, yeah. Uh, applications. Large, large icons. Yeah. yeah I, I can't freaking see anymore, man. Right there, uh, uh, mail 32. Or, you go to mail, right? Mail. Right there, there you go. So, so this is where most of your time, you're just going to come here and play around with the profile, adding another profile. You can do this in multiple different ways with Office 365 ability now, but you're going to click over here and the easy way to get your app data folder is you're going to go to a data file over here, Raj, and you're going to click on open file location. Regardless of being it's being hidden, you're going to be able to open that. Does that make sense? Raj, are you there? Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, so then, uh, where, another way is also to the folder method. Sorry, what's that? So another way is uh, going into the file system yeah. thirty two area. Yeah, you can you can go into different ways, but this is the this is the pad that you're gonna be here for when you're looking for that you know that refreshing the whole the the the, the email right. So the whole uh, profile. So one method is that if you wanna keep certain options, like for example, if something is in the offline address book, if this person have added something. Uh, some caching going on. Of course, we don't know too much about this area because that's just a little too much about Outlook stuff. But one method and one fix is what? You just basically close everything, even the mail folder, like the, 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 the mail uh, pop-up. You're going to close everything that has to do everything with Outlook. You're going to come over here and you're going to rename. You're going to rename this file right here to something backup, right? So when you do that, what will happen? When you restart your Outlook again, and uh, this is an issue that I have to fix, but I'll talk about this later on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna basically rename this and turn it on again. So what happened? Now I'm still I'm still keeping this person's some of this person's data while I'm getting a new profile getting created. Look what happened on the bottom right here. Is Sorry new... guys, uh, I got stuck. I'm back. Oh, Sorry welcome back. That. Welcome back. So so uh, Raj, this is one method that you're gonna fix almost, let's say 70% or 60% of issues when Outlook is freezing. When you open the inbox, there's a problem going on with the Outlook and it's gonna go out and do what right now? What is it doing? It's creating a new profile, but it's going out and grabbing all your emails from where? From your server, right? Server. And anything with, with groups, access, you have favorites, everything will show up as it was before. Another method to fix this, and probably my last method, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna go back and show you something over here. And this is where I'm gonna throw some warnings. First of all, the warning is that you don't delete something from Outlook, okay? If a person has been working for three years inside the Outlook 
inside the company for let's say three years. Of course, that person has a, a huge mail going on over there. Now, the reason we do this is that what if your Exchange server or your Office 365 server goes down for some reason? Now that person is going to be in extreme panic mode if they do not get their email back, right? Uh, and if the servers are down, Office 365 is down, then what will happen? They're not going to get an email, even if you re even if you repair. They may even it may even crash. It may not even connect to the server. Now you're going to be in the panic mode too because you did a big mistake. You deleted the whole file because even though that has some type of issues going on, still you could get to the emails, right? You could still have a backup on side of your computer, inside your computer. That's why it's a big file. So what you need to do is you're going to right click over here. And let's say if the file is 15 GB, what option would you choose over here? Can anybody help me? What? Do I need to delete this folder? Do I need to cut this folder or do I need to copy this folder? If it's 15 GB file and this person is like my CEO and looking for emails right now, like you just want to get things done quickly. If it's, it's if it's a critical call and you, even if it's not critical, you're going to use cut option right here. Watch what happens to the cut. If it's cut and it's 30 GB or 15 GB, it will immediately remove that folder from that path. Does that make sense? Look at this, what happened, right? If it was a 30 GB file, you're gonna be sitting there for a while, while, while. Doesn't matter if it's a, let's say if it's not even an SSD computer, now you're in a big trouble. You just lock your computer down for to one, you, you wanted to be safe right there. You made a copy of that file, then you're gonna delete it. So one, you're waiting for the copying to happen. Second, you're gonna delete it. And you're see you're sitting there like that, like, oh my God, this wow. thing is taking so long, right? You know, there's an issue going on. You know, there's an issue going on. You want to fix this. This is the master fix I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some basic random fixes over here. I'm not talking, you did the safe mode. You did with the add-ons, you've done everything, but you don't want to go to the route of, you don't want to go to the route of the whole repair stuff because that's going to hit a lot of things over there. So now what happens, watch guys, watch this folder very closely. I want you to guys watch this folder very, very closely. As soon as I click on Outlook, I want you to watch what happens over here. What happened? Created another Outlook. It folder. created another Outlook and everything is back again. It's gonna go back to the server and rep like get the whole profile back fresh again and everything that you had is gonna come out there. But what you did right now, you at least got the exact copy just in case, like I said, the scenario one happened, server crashed, server gone, server got encrypted. Server got encrypted is another big one, right? The whole email thing is encrypted. You cannot go back anymore. And you deleted this file. I'm sure you're going to get fired. Because yeah. <laughs> right? you just blew up their three years worth of emails and now they cannot get, I'm not, I'm not, that was a joke that you're going to get fired because that's not only you, right? That's going to so be. So basically, so basically when you did that, you took out that Outlook profile. Then when you bought back in and recreated the Outlook profile, correct? Yes. Okay. So it's the same thing as you going into the control panel, going to the 32 bit and going into the, the actual um, profile area. If you see like a, a profile named Steven, you can make it, make it, you can make, create a new profile named Donish and go in there and recreate that profile. And it's going to recreate that Outlook profile, exactly. right? Or does it keep that old one? No. Does it's, it recreate the folder or is it just throw another like OST file in there? It's gonna create another OST file in there. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't delete none of that stuff. The reason we so don't do you're that. Doing, you're creating a whole yes. new folder. Yes. So if anything in that folder is kind of hinky, it's, it's get gone fixed. and it's recreated it from scratch. Yes. Like it never even existed. It never even existed because what happened with this folder is so every time you either get some type of uh, funky things going on that you install a. Uh, add on or something and it started hitting this folder for some reason or there's some corruption going on so like i said in my experience 90 percent of the time when i did this process almost 90 percent of the issues with basic outlook issues freezing freezing all that kind of stuff but what about the pst files now the pst files of course you gotta have to kind of that's a different thing that's something that's you have to we have to like reattach them after you have to reattach that of profile. course that's 
that's not but, that's not going to the server and getting that. Right? What about the settings for the looks of it? Let's say they did some different views. Will that's that gonna go that away. Is? That's gonna go away with this process, and that's why I warned you in the beginning that you have two methods. One, you can change the the the, the data file, and that would probably retain it because we saw the the address book was. Oh, there. you the just named it dot old and dot new. Okay, yeah. you just created a new one so, there. So there's a method behind this, right? You use one method after another method. And lastly, this last master fix right there. Now, here's the thing. How many people are going to complain about Vue when their Outlook is being crashing and you fix right. it for them? I mean, after they're almost, done. Almost none of the people so far in my, in my career. Nobody. Well, one thing to tell the audience is that when you saw that data Outlook, was a data outlook file. It's actually called an OST file, which is, a, which is really like it's, it's simplified calling an offline storage table in Outlook. So that's what the actual Exchange server holds on the server, but that is created every time you create a new profile in Outlook. Just to keep that in your mind, but it says da Outlook data file, but it's really like an OST file, unless Outlook changed that, but that's the way it was. Now, have they, uh, have they changed that or is it still they, like an OST uh, file? They did, they did change, well, if you look at this, this is a different format. And that's why I got confused last time too, that I'm like, oh, I think I'm outdated in this area. Probably Kev might have a better answer on this, but and I don't I think see. it was always called Outlook yeah. data file. And, yeah, and they, they, they used to have a PST, I believe. Right, which is a personal storage yeah. table and without now, the ones created outside the inbox. And now if you try to do the PST, it will go to your document and I guess it creates an Outlook folder and it will drop it out there automatically. But that's something you can change always. Because I have Office 2010 and mine still says it does well. Even when I was working with that, it's, I think it still said data Outlook file. I don't think it ever said could, OST could file. Could be maybe I'm I'm just probably thinking differently right now. I mean, so, but that, that might be that might be true. That might be true. You wanna I you know. also wanna you also wanna keep in mind when you when you do create a new OST profile, you if it's working fine and they're they're you create a new one and it's working fine, you also wanna keep in mind that you clear out the, the, the first one, the old one, because that does retain space on the hard drive. Yeah. So after a few weeks or a few days and you know it's working fine, just remove the other one. Of course, when you cut that that folder, if it's 15 gigs. And you know that everything is working fine. You may just take it out. If a super important person, you will take it out to some other backup, like, you know, some other backup mm -hmm. where you can bring it always back to, to do certain things with it, to fix it or whatever, for your personal reasons, whatever reasons are. Or, or you can put and, it on, or, a, on a share drive and save it somewhere. Yeah, and that's, that's what most likely we do. Like if it's a president or CEO, we have these special backups that back the backups, right? Yeah. So we'll put whatever in there. Just, just make sure that we, I'm not going to be in a situation ever where the CEO will tell me that because of you, I lost my files. That's never going to happen. Why? Because I am making sure it backs up like twice like that for these type of people. Like I said, it depends on company to company. It could be a normal user, to be honest. And now I know this is not, this is probably not the best practice. You may be like, well, Danish is careless. For when this is normal users, I'm like, okay, I will back it one time in seven days and I'll warn the person that I'm going to delete this file. It's not going to be on your computer for forever, yeah. you know? Hey, Kev, you probably, well, you probably saw it with you, Donis. With the Office 365 now, do they have do they have PST files yet, or is that thrown by the wayside? Is that still going on, or did Outlook 365 get rid of get rid of the PST files locally? Well, the only way to test it is if I have a local server and I kind of like, uh, well, if you saw that this connected to Office 365, there was no PST at all. You saw that, right? But the PSTs will be downloaded on the actual hard drive on, on your actual hard drive. Hard drive there, yeah. um, but I think I've read though that you have to five get rid of PST files unless that's just a business. That is where my confusion is that I don't see it, so I believe you're you're right. You might I have just don't see it because but now they call them um, archive. I think it's called arc. I mean, uh, maybe archive is. It is, it is archive. Let me open. It, it, it mm -hmm. is oh, archive, yeah. and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna archive in that format. Yes. Yeah, I think that's, that's something we did in our training as well. Yeah, it's. Uh, so you go to hold on. Let me see if I can open this quickly. Because I know that oh, at, nice. at the hospital they were not allowed to do PST files. It was just all. It was just all OST, and um, they could archive them. They because they, I because like, when I first started, I can, I like, can confirm it right now. Like, where the heck are the PST files? They're like, oh, we don't have any. Like, why? What happened to PST files? Uh, we, we're not allowed to do that. Did somebody wanted to say something? I heard somebody. Uh, Stephen, when you talk about the uh, okay, when you talk about the uh, file where you move from the system thirty two to the desktop, what does this file keep? Is it the actual emails from Outlook or is it only just the uh, Settings only. Um, 
they're actually like um, when people used to, let's say Kevin sends you a whole bunch of emails and I don't want them to have them under my inbox to take up my actual space. So what I, what, what the people used to do, they used to create folders outside of your inbox because you got to remember with this OST file, it has your inbox, your junk, your spam, or whatever's enclosed in, whatever is like in captured there on the screen here. Like you got the underneath ad, you got inbox, drafts, sent items, deleted items, but anything below, you know, outside of the inbox was considered a PST file. So I could right click, make a folder called Kevin's junk and then put it down there and then throw all his emails in there. And then that is physically on the hard drive. It is no longer on the, on the exchange server. So then if I get rid of my outlook of my profile, I will still have access to those Kevin's junk folder because I saved it as a external folder on the, on my hard drive. It's now, it's no longer up on the, on the exchange server collecting, you know, building up, uh, you know, data on it. So in other words, you only have so much, you know, so much stuff you can store on these OST files before your company says, uh, you need to archive because I'm running out of space. And when, you know, the machine, when the, you know, when Outlook runs out of space with that OST file, everything can get, your Outlook can slow down. You won't, you won't, you can't send or receive. Um, and then people warning, well, what's going on? Well, your space is all done. So it can't do anything anymore. So you either have to archive and stuff like that. There's a certain amount, there's a certain amount of a folder or items <laughs> you could keep per folder. I don't know if you know that, but there's a certain amount of, of items you could keep on a, on a specific folder, on an Outlook folder before Outlook starts to crash. I think it's 100,000 emails. I'm not sure what it is. It's yeah, a certain number. some kind of cap off. Yep. I see, bro. That means you can take the OST folder. Yeah, like my drawing. Move it to the another computer and you can- Yeah, but it. if you do that oh, though, Raj, let's say it's like 20 gigs. And how long it's going to take? Hours and hours. You're better off just blow the darn thing away. Who cares? It's up on the exchange server anyway. It's going to take that long to do one process or the other. So with the OST file, like you always have a safety net. That is your safety net. The PST files are not. But one thing, when you do create these new profiles for Outlook, you have to re-add the PST files to it. So you people were going, going, well, where's my Kev file? Well, what do you mean? Oh, I had it there before. Oh, it's a PST file. Oh, I have to go in and have to reattach it. And maybe, um, you know, maybe Donis can show you there how to reattach it after his little drawing thing. Um, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta like, part of, yeah. part of, yeah. a, part of, part of, part of the, <laughs> OA, the Outlook profile or whatever, part of that, like so, taking this seriously into Outlook profiles, be careful with that because you could blow up their Outlook profile. Then they can't search. They cannot receive emails. Then, then, um, when they're trying to type in new email, it's going to be really slow, you know, so all those things that you do on a, on a new Outlook profile, just be careful when you do that because that will cause a lot of problems. And the user's going to get mad at you. So when, when Danish is moving the, the thing from the desktop, he's technically deleting the PST and OST file. And then Outlook is recreating a new PST and OST file. Huh? Well, only the OST file. Well, remember now, you have to physically move the PST. You have to save those. Only OST. You know, only the, the OST file gets recreated. That's it. Hey, guys, what's the difference between OST and PST? I still don't get it. What was that? What was the difference between OST and PST files? OST file is an offline storage table. That is the file that is stored on the exchange server, on the physical exchange server. The PST file is called a personal storage table. That one is a folder which you create, and it's located on your hard drive, SSD or hard disk, whatever. It is physical to the drive. And it's so usually, if it's usually dies, cached. It's usually you have cached no backup. Storage. Well, you can also use like Cassix 12. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you got to remember that too. Like if the hard drive dies and they didn't back up their PSD files, they're gone. So it, it's a very good practice for to tell the customer, hey, you might want to transfer these PST files over to the, your, uh, your, like your a shared drive. Just in case your hard drive ever goes, because the OST oh. file, you can blow it away 20, 30, 40, 50 times. Who cares? It's, it's, like, it's like your, in your, in your, like web-based Gmail, it doesn't it doesn't stay on your computer, um, but it's in the server, right? So you you don't when you open your Gmail, it doesn't like download the whole emails again and again when you open the email, right? It's caching somewhere else. But in your case, 
when you're working with Outlook or Exchange, it uses the OST and it basically caches version on your computer. You probably can remove that because there's actually a way to actually uh, get rid of that too and just rely everything on online, but not, not a lot of companies do that. I see, I see. Okay, I have two questions. To read. Okay, so just to clarify, OST files are files that are offline stored in the, in the actual computer so that you don't need to go back to the Exchange server and pull the files, okay? PST files are profile files, so these are actually settings, like how the users want the setting to be, where the junk folders, all those kinds of stuff. Then another question, I, I, I have this uh, question. So if suppose Outlook keeps on crashing, if you delete the OST file, that will solve the problem, especially if the Outlook is very slow, that will solve the problem, right? Well, if your Outlook is very slow, it could be maybe you just run out of space. If, I mean, what's the question again? Like, it's yeah. if your outlook is slow and if you did do this process, will it make it faster? Is that the question? No, if your outlook is slow, if you delete the OST file, will it make it faster? Or there's no difference at all. I see sometimes it does. Sometimes, I mean, that's that's why if you have a very large profile being built for years and years and years and it cached all that junk in there that you know, things that got removed, added, all that kind of stuff, that folder, yes. And I mean, it's just gonna refresh everything again, right? If you create the whole thing again. It could, it could also, like a computer, it could also right? be, um, it could also be the view settings. So like the view settings, if you change the view settings on the on Outlook, it slows down the computer. I don't know if you know that, but in view settings. But, so but you set the preview panel on the view settings, because I learned this from training with make people from Microsoft. If you, if you change the view settings, I actually, like how, you know how you have like this, the email view pre preview on the right hand side, then you have it on the bottom. If you turn off the view preview setting, it actually increases the speed of Outlook. I don't know if you know that, but that's basically, because I, I, I worked with Office 365 and I worked for Microsoft and, is that, because, training and stuff like that. Is that because Outlook uses so much memory and it's using some more memory because of the special features it has within it? Yes, yes. So if you, that will, it gets a little finicky. So basically that yeah. if you remove that preview panel, it actually makes Outlook a lot faster then also on top of that, there's this thing called hardware acceleration on advanced options. If you if you if you checkbox that the advanced options of hardware acceleration, it basically uses more CPU for that for Outlook. I don't know if you know that. That's a setting on on, on Outlook. If in, in the advanced setting options, oh, that also I don't know if Ganesh knows what I'm talking about, but basically that that's basically you know out of Outlook as well. And then other things in Outlook as well would be obviously you know like if they have an add-in or they might need more memory or the C drive, the C drive is full. So then you start having lag and latency because- like, Honestly, because my experience, I didn't went any further than just recreating the, the profile, to be honest. And that the folder, like I said, that's my fix to, to be honest in many of the places. I'll just warn them with certain things. Hey, you may lose your Wii or stuff like that, but I don't care about that. I and mean, I'm just gonna fix it. And usually now, because I don't directly work on the side of support, I'm a sysadmin, so that I don't get these type of calls. That maybe probably I'm I'll be missing something that what Kevin's saying. So definitely, yeah, because I because I I worked with Microsoft in my last job, so I had Microsoft come to our office and they show me the reason why it's so laggy and slow. So if you change the preview panel settings, that actually fixes the latency of Outlook. Um, and if you go into settings on the advanced options on Outlook, there's something called hardware acceleration. If you click on that and you you apply that, it basically increases the speed of Outlook. Just stuff that I learned, you know, from mm. training with, with Outlook, with Microsoft. Just one, of, one of the best tips that somebody says online that if you install Service Pack 3 on Windows XP, it's going to make it faster. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I think we answered that question up and down the left and right. And All over the place. <laughs> hey, uh, Donis, I mean, this might be a stupid question. Sure but I'm gonna ask again. When, when you cut the Outlook file and put yeah. it on the desktop, that changes the path? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was gonna ask. What's the difference between the cut and copy? The copy is we can copy, but when you cut it, what happens to that folder in the background? Does that act- I have to call Microsoft for this. Does that act like a move? <laughs> it's, it's a move, but it's a, uh, well, it's a certain place. Okay, so if you're inside the same machine- When you're a system. When you in the same system, so the way it works is that it takes that as a, I don't know how, like I cannot explain this probably more technically sure. better because like how you, you know how your disc is like holding some spaces and when you, every time you write something to the disc, it holds that, right? But if you are gonna be, let's say you do the copy on a network machine, 
it's going to basically say, oh, this is not a part of my, my, my system. So cutting, I'm not, this is probably not the best answer, but the cutting works like, I know this is part of my whole system. So I'm just going to move it from there and just put it in this place. It's like that. Copying is like, you keep that, which wherever it is on my hard drive, and yeah. I'm going to copy another, another form, another, sorry, another duplicate of this in this new spot right there. So I'm not sure. Technically, this may not be the perfect answer, but that's how, because if you- I'm thinking it's like the move. I'm thinking it's like a move, not more a cut. Maybe, maybe they can't use the word move for some reason, but it's more like a move. You're well, moving well, that won't, it, won't it tell you if you right click on it and go to location and we can see the path? Or did Kevin, Kevin's back on, uh, yeah. we're on his screen now. I don't know. Uh, Is that what you asked him, Stephen? What's the path? What, what, where? Well. I mean, I was kind of confused with that too about the cutting and the and the pacing or copying, but I guess I mean, maybe it's, we should Google move, that. I don't know if is there is there a move option in there? I don't see. I don't any think so, there. right? There's so no move option. So maybe cut is move in Microsoft. Yeah, there's no there's no move oh, option. Oh. There isn't. No. Mm -mm. Do they have move in Apple World? There, Kev. They, yes, they do. I think they do. Yeah. There yes. you go. So maybe that's why they can't use the word move. Maybe they use the word cut. So they don't get any trouble with them. Hmm. You guys want to go over the next ticket, or are we still sure? Talking about this? <laughs> just, just, F, just FYI, the cut commands remove the selected data from our original position, which I just explained, right? Like mm -hmm. that's given the same this. The copy command creates a duplicate, which I kind of say the same thing. So, yeah, right. Uh, guys, sorry, yeah. I have one more question. Uh, Stephen, no. you talk about a PSD, right? So, you suppose you have a situation where tomorrow I create a new account entirely new account uh, and then he he might have his own set of emails from exchange server is it okay and suppose if someone else have the settings which i really like is it possible i just can copy the psd file from his computer and move it to my computer while i still get my personalized email but i get the same settings as him and second question is it possible to put psd files over group policy <laughs> i have no idea I don't know, but PST files has nothing to do with customization of Outlook. It's just, it's just emails. It's just a folder with, with a, it's just like a container holding an ob, or like, like an object or, or I'm sorry, a container and it just has stuff in it. So it's just like a folder. It's, that's all it does. I mean, it's all it is. Like if you right click on your computer right now and create a folder and put stuff in it, it's the same thing, but you're just doing it on your hard drive instead of doing it, you know. You won't you won't see someone run group policy on a profile on an Outlook profile. I've never seen that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that either. No, more, it's more just locally. I mean, I'm sure it can be done in I some oddball way. I'm sure. I'm sure Donis will do a video one day on that, and that would probably drive him nuts for a couple. But hours. that means what? The PSD file only stores all the settings of the profile. That's what you're trying to say. For, for doing the group policy, I mean, you can do anything. It's just moving a file to the right place and then applying another command, but you're just kind of like using group policy to do the manual <laughs> task from group policy, right? So it may be possible, but then again, who, I, I, I personally wouldn't do anything like that if somebody called me about that. I'm yeah, like, why, I do it. why do you need this? Like, <laughs> go ahead and just do it yourself. You know, like that's just the manual stuff you need to do. So unless it's like, okay, we need this PST file for these 300 users in this specific folder, can you guys help us out? So I will say, yes, give me the PST file. I'll do it through group policy. No, no worries with that. that. That's something I can help you, right? Yeah, a lot of things I'm throwing about this Outlook thing is that when I when we did a migrate, but we were doing a um, PC refresh and we were doing it for some lawyer at the insurance company back in the day there, back when I was working at CNA. And we got in her office and it was you know nighttime. We started it. I don't know, about eight o'clock at night. She had over like 50 gig because she was a because she was a lawyer, she could have all this of our OST file. It took almost like eight hours to do. So we were there from like eight o'clock in the morning to like at least so like six o'clock the next hour morning. She came in her office, she's going, You guys are still here? Or like, yeah, your OST file is like huge. And it's like, we just sat there, I slept all night. It's kind of like waking up, looking. I just slept on the freaking death because I was tired. And I was like, oh, my God, but we had to have it done. So some of these things can be really huge. I mean, there are cap offs, but I mean, just think about it. I mean, it takes a long time. So when you go to do these OST files, take a look for it before you blow it away. And just tell the customer you won't have Outlook for a couple hours 
or so because depending how how like slow the network is you know you have like no idea you know it could be fast it could be slow so that that also comes into play about downloading these big ost files so don't don't just think that this is going to happen just like that and it doesn't it takes a long time sometimes so that's all i'm going to say next ticket all right let's go to the next do you get do you get could you get overtime for this or not yeah, of course. Yes, I did. Heck yeah, they paid for that for me sleeping. I was inside her office. I had my feet up. I just was like, uh, like this on the darn table. I'm like, I'm going to sleep. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and babysit a freaking file. It, it yeah, was all bro. good. You know? eight, eight hours to transfer a file, that, that's a lot, man. <laughs> Eddie, you want to say something or I want to go to the next ticket? No, I was, no I'm fine. You want to break this? No, I, I want to see a picture of that cute girl you were talking to on the phone. Ah, uh, you're funny. <laughs> All right. So, uh, my printer has stopped working. Good afternoon. I have a meeting in five minutes and my printer isn't working. Can someone please help? Nothing like pressure, Kev, huh? huh? You're already on the other side of the damn building. I'll be there in five minutes. Yeah, you, right. You, you, like, you like my tickets today? They're, they're crazy, right? Yeah, they're crazy ones. Yeah, tell me about it. So I have a meeting in five minutes. My printer isn't working. Can someone please help? Regards, Thomas, Senior Managing Director. Uh, can you ping to the printer? What will be your troubleshooting steps? Hey, up below that. I would just set her up with another printer quick, close by, and say, here, print it, go. I'll, st I'll deal with this after your freaking meeting. That's what I would do. Yep, good idea. Eddie? I was thinking the same thing. Uh, have a print on a different printer if they have another printer. I'm assuming there's more than one printer. You would think they always have a backup, unless they're cheap. If there's oh, only yeah. one, then that. So what? What we? I, I would try to print something on that computer from my computer. See if the printer's working. Mm -hmm. If the printer prints, so would you would you would you troubleshoot the printing issue, or we just have, or we just map them to another printer and then deal with it later? I would do the the latter option, which you just said. The second thing, just so and then get come back to it later. If she's in a hurry, right? It's five minutes. And what what, what else would you? What else can you do to help her? Like what else can you do? Can I, I don't know if this is a good idea. Can I have her send me the file? I print it. Yes, it exactly. Out? Yes. That was, that was my, that was my answer. Yes. Okay, I would print so, the document so, for the user and then give it to them. All right. So sometimes the easier manual thing, I was, I was thinking, you know, something more tech heavy, but. No, it could just, you could just print the document for them and then. When they, while they're while they're in the meeting, you troubleshoot it and fix it. Make sure they're logged in. Make sure they don't lock their computer because sometimes people lock their computer. And make sure you troubleshoot it and then try to get the printer to work for them on their computer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Steve, you want to add something to that? Yeah, the best part about these uh, these printer things when you walk into people's offices that I've noticed is sometimes they have their own personal computer. They have like like little HP things sitting on the desk where they use like for five years you know, and stuff like that. And you walk in, you're like, well, what printer are you using? Hmm. This HP one right here. And it, it, might, it might be a, it <laughs> might be a dumb issue. It might be a dumb issue where they have multiple printers connected to their computer and they don't have the right printer, default printer. You know, it could be a dumb issue like that too. Like where basically you, you did like, every time I hit the drop down and I try to print, it's set to a different printer. Why is it printing from there? Not from here, you know? That could happen too. Like someone's trying to print something, they hit the drop down. The default printer is like five rooms away and that their default printer is supposed to be the printer that's right next to them. So you probably just have to go to a control panel and just change the settings and change it to the default printer. You know, that, that also could be something that could happen. You know, you've got to also remember too, if this person is from a senior managing director, maybe if they send you the file, maybe they don't want you to read with the information that they're actually sending to. So you got to be careful with that as well because um, you don't want to read any kind of important material. So which could, you know, be directed towards somebody that you know like hey i saw this from the director 
that would be no good too as well. So you got to be, it's a very delicate situation as well when they, people send you files. It's very important files. So, you know, keep that in mind too. Like, yeah, well, maybe all right. Like, yeah, I can print that out for you. Okay. Yeah, it's like, are, I could do that. I get away with that. But you know, can I get away are you going to read that on your way down here to my desk? Uh, no. Uh -huh. Well, then you got to take it to the account that they're going to be honest with you. So just keep that in mind too. I mean, a lot of these, you know, directors don't want you to see in what is on there. It could be something that, you know. They, they and and some, of, some of these directors have admins too, and the admins could print it for them as well. I don't know if you, yeah. you know that. Some of them have admin. They have admin assistants. And then, and they're like, oh, my printer's not working. Can you print this for me real quick? And then the admin will print it for them. Remember, the admin assistants now are, they were secretaries years ago, but now they're called admin assistants. Oh, admin assistants. Yeah. Politically yeah. correct. We walk in, they're like, oh, you guys are admins? No, we're admin. We're, you know, you guys are not secretary. We're admin assistants. That's a very, very important thing, too, guys. Like, that secretary thing is no more. No more? No. So, yeah. Admin assistant, you, they they sound more important, and they do a lot more things for the people. Yeah, they're they're, they're we have they have executive assistants, and basically the assistant yeah. uh, prints the document for them, so schedule meetings for them on their calendar. Um, they they set up appointments for them. They call for their cab, their taxi. Maybe they have to they, maybe they have to do a, a plane flight. They have to set up their plane flight as well. Maybe they have an event they're going to. Maybe they have a, a meeting they're going to with someone that's out of the com company. You know, but point is the point is. The assistant can do all that. Like the assistant could print for them. They might not want you to print it. Maybe the, the assistant could print it for them, you know, or either that, or you go, you know, just sit on their computer while they go in the meeting and you fix the, the, the printing issue, you know? So mm -hmm. it's more than, there's more than one way to solve this ticket. So. Yeah. Another way from, I learned from Kevtech video is your video is the services. You can go to the services and print pool, the print pool, print spooler. You can restart the service. But that would be more troubleshooting the, the ticket. Yeah. Okay. Is the ticket now to solve the issue? You come, are you coming back for it? Right. Then of course it's principaler driver being, making a default, um, reinstalling it. That would be more like troubleshooting the, the issue to fix you it. You know, with that principal or thing too, I mean, if you have a, in your queue, if you have a print job in there, that's stuck, or you have two or three of them that's stuck in there you can go in there you can actually you know restart the principal when that's going to reset the actual queue it's going to remove those jobs out of the queue and then bring it back up again so and then that's one but that's a little bit more deep what don is just saying so you might you want to be make that as your last resort maybe see what the heck is going on but you know maybe she might have some jobs stuck in her print queue while now, while that's while that's happening i'm just showing what yeah, go ahead. what they're talking about so usually this is a printer right here and show them what happens after you stop the principal or like what happens to your printers. So this is a simulation. I don't know if it's going to work, uh, it by the work, way. May not work. Uh, it, so Steven, this is a simulation from test out. So I don't know if it's okay. going to But it's, it's, it's what I'm going to use tomorrow, guys. Be prepared because yeah. what Raj asked today, it's not going to be that simple to you go print it out for somebody else. No, I'm telling you, you're a technical person. You got to fix the issue now. You can't just, okay, you fix that. That was just a customer service type of thing, right? But how do you fix the issue on the printer? So of course, this is going to be where you're going to right click over here. What Steven is talking about, see what's printing and it's stuck. The job is stuck in there, right? So is it showing? If it's not showing, this means they, they yeah. don't have, so they don't have that in the simulation. Steven, this is what I'm talking about. Test out, have like a little simulation. If you double click it, what happens, anything? Well, double click it, it may open that, uh, hold on. No, it doesn't, but it, it only yeah. opens what this lab is about. So if I move yeah. this, you see this is a lab. Okay. Oh, okay. So if, I, if I open the, so basically what we we're talking about here is that you're going to see when you open this, what's printing, it's going to have a list in there. And that, that could be leading to an issue with the document or specifically color, but whatever that crap is with printers. I hate printers, I, by the way. So you're going to come over here. You're going to do. Uh, nobody, nobody, nobody likes printers. Come on. Hold on, man. <laughs> nobody likes printers. I see no likes printers. <laughs> so you're going to come over here and you see, this is where Steven is talking about print spooler. You can do this by command line as well. If you're sitting somewhere outside of your, uh, you know, like office and you're doing, you want to remotely do this, you can do that remotely as well. And you can come over here, restart the sprint, uh, uh, print spooler by stopping, restarting. That usually will fix some of the basic issues. Another issue could be leading to uh, printer properties and going to the printer properties. And of course, you're going to go more advanced and, and kind of like check things out. Okay, device settings, uh, you know, uh, more advanced settings. So if I click on more advanced, this is where you're going to come in and maybe 
this is missing a driver. As you can see, this is the lab it's about actually. It's, it misses a driver. So maybe you either install the wrong driver or you maybe need to change that driver by clicking to new. And of course you need to get those drivers. Um, sometimes Windows 10 already get it for you, but sometimes if it's like a very big printer and it's from a company, they will have to give you that from a CD or USB or so certain type of networking tool. I, that I was going to, I was going to say some companies don't even let you right click and click on the printer and you have to go into the print server and the IP address and actually connect from there and do it from there. Yeah. And that's, that's another, so one of the basic interview questions that you can get from people, by the way, is that, um, how do you add a network printer? Now, everybody knows to how to connect a printer in your home. Usually people don't ask these type of questions unless they want to test extreme basics um, in, in your, uh, your job, which people, some people do. They'll have to then test you and, okay, how do you add a printer on a network? Now, there are multiple ways to do this. So the basic way is from, from just a Windows perspective, you just go to add a printer. And of course, you have different type of ways. You can add a device, you can add a printer over here. You can look for a printer from IP address. Now, again, this is a simulation. You see that's why there's no options in here. Or another method of this is that if there's a big network printer, they comes with their own networking softwares. Most likely I'm gonna be using that. Why? Because they already give me all of the printers in my network with the IP addresses, the MAC addresses, and it just kind of makes my job very super, super easy. So all I got to do is to do that. And that's where I, when I installed like a very big printers in the companies, most, uh, most of the time I would give that to my, the, the IT guys and because I wanted to use the same process. So why is that? Because if everybody uses different processes, they may add a printer in a different way and they may basically uh, use a method that may not be like applying uh, on a network level, like for example, this is an IP address. They may add the IP address in a certain way that, that that has to be changed for it to work next time if there's an issue. So I, I, I've seen these type of issues, but this is almost every time when you go to a different company, everybody will have a different experience on this stuff. Yeah, Apparently, Danish, talking about printers, uh, can you explain to me, uh, explain to uh, what's the difference between the print server in Active Directory and the what you're talking about, the uh, Print, print softwares that are provided by like Canon and HP and all of that versus the print servers provided in Windows Server Active Directory. Well, when, when you say print server and Active Directory, that's just one management area where you drop all the drivers and everything makes it easy for you to use your group policy, makes it easy for you to pick things from the group policy using Active Directory. Uh, that's like just like a management area. Print server is not like you have some type of special hardware in there. It's just the management piece inside to manage, uh, manage things for you. Unless I'm mistaken, maybe people can correct me, but this is not like a real, like when you say a print server, what is it? It's just providing the feature, the service, right? In one place. When I say a networking printer, it's just the software they have built to look around your private IP addresses that there's a printer available near me. There's a HP available with this IP address because I am an HP software. So I know how to look for it, right? So that's the difference between these two, the, the things that I'm explaining. Now, if I'm explaining something different, of course, that's some, somebody can correct me. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. And there's, uh, there's some companies that they use Print Cloud, like what I use, and we manage our software, our printers through Print Cloud. And there's some companies that manage it on a print server. You know, it's just providing, you know, management basically of the printers, so. Somebody say that no corporation will have a level one text accessing printer servers to reset the spooler, maybe a small mom and pop shop or law firm. No, not at all. I mean, there, is a, there are very big nonprofits out there. They have 300 to 400 to 500 users and level one techs are able to do. Now, remember, when we say level one techs cannot do this, this is not like, this shouldn't be a hard coded uh, comment or answer on this. You learn as a level one tech, you sometimes you do repetitive work from sysadmins even. So sometimes I will even let level one to do the stuff that I have taught them. Does that make sense to a lot of people? So for new people, they may see this comment and oh, you, you know what? That's something I'm not gonna do. So I'm not gonna learn about Prince Pooler. Go to a job and you will find out how many people are gonna ask you about this Prince Pooler, even with the level one uh, position. Not everybody does that, but the people do get to these type of details, okay? So don't try to make this a hard, like, oh, this is just for people to, who are brand new, like Eddie and other people, when they see a comment like this, not a bad comment. It's just that I'm explaining it based on my experience of having 40,000 people in our platform, right? Yeah, because er everyone's yeah. experience is different. Some people yeah, so, will have access to do it. Yeah, so, so, so when we say a level one is not allowed to do that, 
maybe in the beginning that's true but a level one usually will do a lot of repetitive work that systems admins don't want to do it because they have other things going on so we give level one let's say for example recycling app pool now this may be very sound very advanced to a lot of people what does that even mean it's an is server in is there's what there's applications there's a website in the applications there's different apps we call it app pools in there. In the app pools, there are different apps, right? So if I had to recycle the app pool every day, I may create a script for it. Maybe for some reason I can't do it. Or maybe I'll teach my level ones that if a website went down, you guys need to get into that server and recycle that app pool to fix this issue. So see, I have, this is a repetitive issue that's going on. I'm looking for a fix, but at this time I'm having level one involved with me. So then the, the issue is resolved immediately while I have time to fix it. Does that make sense to a lot of people? This is how it works in IT. There's no, in like, the, this comment is like good, but it's still, it's like, I want people to understand that that shouldn't be a, something that you should think of, oh, I'm not gonna do it, so I'm not gonna learn about it. Done, level one, I'm level one, I'm not gonna learn about it. Um, I'm gonna share my screen for a second, guys. No, you Sam, you can't do that now, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, okay, you guys can see it. Okay. Um, so if we look at the, this is my printer, and this is the services. So if I click on here to see what's printing, what this, what this thing brings up, uh, you click on this. This is the actual print queue area right here. So as you can see, there's nothing in there now. Um, if, a, if a print job was stuck in here or something like that, you can go in here, you can right click on it, and you can hit cancel and stuff like that. Um, what we were doing here is a print spooler. And as you can read here, it says the services uh, spools print jobs and handles interaction with your print with the printer. If you turn the service off, you won't be able to print or see your printers. That's very, very important because if you guys, if you come back to, uh, what do I have here? I wanna go to control panel. If I go to control panel and open up, and go on devices and printers. As you can see, you can see my printers. Now watch this. If you walk up, walk up to somebody's machine and you want to turn the prints to principal or service off, and you come back here and you do a refresh on this, it's, these things should go bye bye, right? They should go bye bye. Why aren't they going bye bye? Hold on. Then I got to close it and reopen it. And you know what? It probably it probably freaking restarted by itself. No, it no, did not. It should go bye bye, guys. Right? Am I? Yeah, no, no, no. You're, you're right. You're right. And your computer won't do that. But it should. It's. It's not gonna work on your computer. Sure, I won't. Yeah, they there are. We go. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, they are. There we go. So they're like, all the like grayed out. This? But in the in the enterprise world, they'll be gone. There'll be nothing there. They'll be all blanked out because they're because they're all like shared like computers. So they're all they're all like you know they're all shared printers. So they'll all, they'll all be gone. So what you could do then, and once you do that, that's going to basically get rid of this queue. Anything in this queue there, it will be kind of like, you look at that, even with the printer, you can, I mean, access the actual print queue. So once you restart this puppy back up again, the print spooler service, then you'll have access back to the print spooler, back here to the queue, and then you, every job will be wiped out then you can go ahead and have that user try to print again and see if that works. Now that's a little more in depth, but if it's stuck and you're right clicking, you're like, it's not deleting, it's not deleting. Get in here, turn off the principal or service, wait for about 10 seconds, turn it back on, make sure that the print, the actual print queue is, is you know, she's all like cleaned out and then go on with your next step. So, but that's one of that, that, you know, this thing saved me like a lot of times where I'm like, well, I can't cut out the actual print queue. What should I do? They're all like jammed in there. So I went in there, I saw, I restarted the actual print, you know, spooler service. It cleaned it all out, tried it again. Then we only have one job. So we could see if that one job in there is catching everything. You know, maybe you could try something light, you know, just like a little text file to see if that prints. And then maybe try the file that he or she was trying to print. There could be something with that file that it's not jiving with. So you're like, all right, we gotta we gotta find some other way to get this thing printed for you or something like that. So, um, have so you I guys also noticed like when you try to fix this issue and none of this whole thing works and you're like, let me just delete the printer and the printer won't delete. 
Yeah. Over? I mean, oh, I yeah. Yes. I, I hate that. I hate that. And uh, usually for that kind of stuff, you got to go to registry and delete it from there. Well, you know, sometimes, too, if you come in here and you've stopped this principal or service down, sometimes it does get rid of it. Oh yeah, yeah, like this. This, weird. this is like a. This is like what I call that Outlook fix for me. Like that's like one of my fixes in my career. That uh, I will, I will, well, I will cut that Outlook folder right, and then we'll fix it. Print spooler almost like, at least if it doesn't fix that issue on a user that's sending this weird PDF file to the printer, and it always, uh, you know start happening to give me issues at least i know now where the where the issue is right steven like right. i would know okay exactly now my my printer got fixed this is an issue with this specific nasty file this person got it from somewhere where they had some kind of character in there and it doesn't allow that printer to to do any jobs and i keep then i know okay i'm going to go back to the user and fix it over there but but some cases like oh i cannot even do this like it will not let me delete i want to get rid of this crappy printer that I got it from assigned from a network or maybe got it installed somebody <laughs> then i would go to the i think i believe it's in a local machine system somewhere and you have to go to the printers and you will see the whole list of printers and you'll yeah, get yeah system right. 32 program files yeah mm -hmm. you know also too with these services guys if you go in here and you don't turn back on this principal or service look what all these uh, look look what this little service here depends on to make this thing when when, when you turn this thing off these other services depend on this on this print puller service. So that's why it's called dependencies. So you have to, you have to remember to turn this thing back on. Because all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, why is an RPC working? Well, maybe, you know, because the service depends on the following components. So this little print spooler service depends on these other services to work. So if you turn off RPC, maybe your print spooler service won't work. Or you turn off whatever MS Quick is and Decom or whatever. So remember, these little services are like applications on, they're like they're like installing Office, they're like installing whatever on your actual machine. You got to remember, these are applications that depend on other applications to work. So services are very important. It's a good thing to learn them a little bit, the basic ones. So in case you do ever have to go into services, you're very comfortable at restarting them. You know, taking a look how they restart. You got automatic, manual, disabled. You know, learn what this thing is. You can stop, start them, um, recovery. You know, log in. How they log in. You know, as. So, all right, that's my spiel on it. So, all right, I'll, I'll release my thing back there. Stop sharing. There you go, guys. Bye. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my screen. Yeah, guys, talking about printers. Uh, do you guys like to go out and like uh troubleshoot things like fax machines? And uh, because I had an issue last week where, uh, because my company still use fax machines because it's still a very fast way to send data for uh from one place to another. But I uh, my company had this issue where I've, I'm tasked to actually go and fix the fax machine, and I'm like quite uh not very sure how to see troubleshoot because I've never received much training on troubleshooting uh, fax machines. Is there any like structural way on, on troubleshooting fax machines? Uh, from my experience, yes. I work with fax machines all the time. So we have something called like a POTS and basically it's connected with Cisco and uh, the Cisco is a Cisco router or a Cisco box converter. Basically it converts um, a Cisco, the Cisco box converts the printer into a fax machine. So you have a network connection and you have a fax line on it and then basically the fax line works. And then you will go into call manager and you will add the phone number there and everything. So, and usually to fix those problems, usually the, the cable needs to be patched on the network or typically it's an issue where the number is messed up or the number is not set up properly on call manager. And also it could be a bunch of other things with, where basically you're having issues with net, network connectivities like that. So it, dip, oh, it depends you can, out how you're set you up. Can, you can call it a a printer directly to a fax machine. Huh? So, I'm sorry? You can connect a printer directly to a fax machine. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. Some, some printers, some of the big Xerox printers, some of the giant printers usually come with a fax line or a fax machine. You can hook it up. Um, in some in some companies, like my company where I work, I use a, I use a Cisco POTS. So with a Cisco POTS, it, it converts the the, basically the printer the Xerox printer into a fax machine. It, it prints, but also does faxing as well. So So now when Kevtech talks about POTS, we're not talking about POT. It's a plain old telephone system. So the old telephone lines, like back in the day when you see the telephone poles with the lines running across, that's what he's talking about. 
So just to clarify that, it is telephone lines, plain old telephone system is what POTS means. Uh, I, I see um, so, so what you're trying to say is, okay, this there's one printer. The printer that, okay, you have your, your standard RJ45 that connects back to the network and all the your print server and all those stuff. Then one end of the printer connects to a fax machine and then the fax machine connects to a telephone line to a PO, POS, P, PSTN. Is it that's what you're trying to say? Yes, that's basically what we have set up. Yes, so yeah, exactly. That's a it's, it's Cisco. Cisco has the ability to do that. So if you have a if you have an environment we we work with Cisco, they have the ability to do that. It basically turns it into a fax line. And people use today a lot of thing something called write fax, which is basically on your computer. It's a it's an it's a computer application which takes the form of a fax machine. So people can fax right from the computers to a physical fax machine at other companies or whatever you go to. So people use that a lot today too for, cause people, like they use, I think they use fax machines, but it's not as crazy as it once was. Oh, so you don't need to print out, it's directly from your computer. Huh? What was that again? You don't need to print out and then put it to a fax machine. You just you can go to your application directly and yeah, it. it's called like Right Fax. So if you would search Right Fax, um, uh, the company that I used to work for, but the insurance company they used to use Right Fax up there. So basically, we we would we would install Right Fax on their computers, and then they can fax from their computer to a physical fax machine, whatever it is. It just goes through the internet and goes to their fax machine. However, they have it all set up. In the background and some companies use e-fax as well you know yeah. it, it, every company is different yeah. it depends where you work very rarely you see fax machines where people walk up and they start pushing buttons and it's yeah it's just like maybe they'll oh. if you work in it you'll probably come across a fax machine at least once yeah. in a lifetime so you'd be like huh what the heck is this <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. dinosaur yeah, thanks for, 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 for like seven years man yeah, because fax because fax machine there isn't even on google when you go to youtube there isn't a lot of videos that talk about fax machine like troubleshoot, troubleshooting especially like how to put a telephone number the right telephone you must dial on the right telephone number then you have to make sure the telephone number the telecom is actually basically still providing service for the telephone number or else the fax machine will not work then like now something i learned from steven is where you can connect the fax machine directly to the printer which i, I did not know that's something i learned from you guys thanks yep cool Dan, you want to say something Oh, uh, no, sorry. I'm actually typing in the chat right now. Oh, okay. I saw that. All right. I'm going to close this ticket out. It says print to the page for the user. That's basically why I put the solution. <laughs> well, we'll go to the next ticket. All right. Here we go. Video conference. Um, good afternoon. We have a video conference tomorrow at Texas for a financial firm. Do I need any cables with me? I have to present a meeting at Dallas. Going to leave in one hour to my flight. Can someone call me ASAP? Regards, Kim. Hi, I don't have a time. Bye. <laughs> That's how I'm going to respond. So we have a video conference tomorrow at, at Texas for a financial firm. Do I need any cables with me? I have to present a meeting at Dallas. Going to leave in one hour to my flight. Can someone call me ASAP? A video conference call. A video <laughs> conference. A video, a video conference. Where are you talking this stuff at? <laughs> a video conference tomorrow at Texas and a financial. Do I need any cables? If it's on your, if you're doing it within Zoom or on some kind of chatting thing, no. No, this this is a, if you look at it, uh, this is a situation that usually occurs when, I believe KevTech, if you can correct me, usually what happens your your staff members go to another place to present, right? KevTech? Yes. And That's when exactly go, right. When you go in there, Stephen, okay. usually what happens is that like VGA cable, what's yeah, your... VGA cable oh, or HDMI, actual. or if mm -hmm. you're taking yeah. back with you, mm -hmm. so they would uh, call the help desk and help desk will give them because uh, sometimes their companies over there they don't provide this kind of stuff. They just want to make sure that it's a uh, backup in there. Usually they do. Usually they do. Usually they do. Usually they do. On this one is that VGA is used a lot in these video conferencing because people don't want to spend the money for the brand new projectors that are out there. So like HDMI, probably you're not going to see a lot of those. Um, it's for you to do VGA, or you need some kind of dongle as well, because if your computer doesn't have VGA, then you got to get a dongle for your computer to convert it from VGA to like 
whatever it needs to to go to. So into your computer, like a HDMI, the VGA, a, a dongle, or something like that, to go into this uh, projector. You like you like you, you like my tickets? Yeah. Should, should we call ahead? The, should we ask? Yeah. Good luck with that. And, and no, good luck with calling. <laughs> Yeah, you I think those to... people? You think those people are going to know? Unless you get the right person that knows about the conference room, they're like, "Yeah, we go in there and it just works." Or we call our IT guy and they come up and they do it for us. It's very rare you have somebody going, "Yeah, you need to this, this, and this," and they're going to say, "Well, my laptop is this," and they're going to look at the ports going, "I don't know what that is, but uh, yeah, I don't know what that is, but maybe you can help me by sending a picture." They're they're not going to know. I mean. So in other words, Kevtech would have to work with their IT guy and going, what do you got there? Oh, mm -hmm. I have this projector and then you give me this dongle. All right, do you have one there? Or let's see if I have one here. Maybe we can set something up that way and here you go, go and put it in your bag and good luck. That's exact, that's exact, that's, that's, the, that's the answer I was looking for. So right. basically oh. what, what you would do is you contact their vendor, you contact their IT support, you work with the IT support, see what's plugged in and connected to that video conference room and then you give her the right cables and then she'll be up, up and away and go to that, you know, to that meeting, to that area, to that, to Dallas, whatever. And then she'll set up her meeting and then you, you'll, you'll call the IT vendor or the IT person that does IT support for that building or for that department or for that company. And they help her set up that meeting, but they have the cables already now since you worked with them earlier before the meeting, you know, that's basically how I would and troubleshoot this. Do you know what usually happens, Eddie? They set up for the conference five minutes before it's about ready to roll. They don't set the half an hour. It's five minutes. So it's kept text. We're running down there. It's five minutes. People are getting in there and kept going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Are you serious? It's like five minutes before this thing. And then you asked me to come do this. So coordination between both or something like that or, or their IT guys, if they're busy, you know, they're going to run down there. You know, they may forget. So then she's calling on the phone. So, you know, doing a little more extra step on your part, maybe going, hey, when you get to the building, call me, come up here to the IT department, let me know so I can go down to this room and get it set up for you already. Let's, you know, test it all out, make sure it works. So then you know what you know what you're doing because you're like new to the room and then you can walk in and set it all up and then hopefully everything will be good. So, you know, you, you want to make sure you do your little part in that. I've seen a lot where people walk in and they're totally unprepared. They're like, yeah, we thought we'd just plug it in and make it work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work like that. You, you, might, mean, you might want to take cables. You might want to take cables yeah. with you. Yeah, exactly. You might want to take cables with you. Either either want to take cables with you or sometimes some of these companies have a USB flash drive where they put all the data or the files like a PowerPoint presentation and you might have to present it on their computer because it's not working on your computer because your computer is blocking it or something like that. It could happen too. You know, there's a lot of things to happen. And here comes the next thing with those. If you do, if you do take a flash drive that you got from your company, you take it to their company. They're gonna allow it. And they're gonna allow it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're like, oh, then the next step is is that you need to get it off her computer, call up Cab going, I need some help, and then try to transfer it over to their computer. Yeah, that, that could that that could that could happen. That could happen, and, and your computer it probably doesn't work. Maybe you don't have the right cables on that computer that, that she's taking to, to their to their to to that place, right? They don't have she doesn't have the right cables. It doesn't work. So then we what they had to do is the IT person that works in that in that building in that office they had to give her another laptop, and then she has to log into webmail or whatever, and then download the file, and then upload it on that laptop, and then plug in the cable, and then set it up. That could happen too. You know, a lot and of things could happen. And just, another just common smart. request in this area of calls are MiFi or hotspots, right? You mm -hmm. go to the conference in some places, they don't even give you the internet or you don't want to use a hotel internet. And um, then you're going to be like, uh, you as a technical person need to know how to at least connect the, the basics of, uh, you know, MiFi or hotspots. Yeah, because they're like, I need, to, I need to open up this document. I didn't save it locally on my desktop and I need to get into my Outlook. So I need you to connect to VPN. Why, why, is there any Wi-Fi in this conference room? No, that could happen too, right? Like, is there any yeah. Wi-Fi in this conference room? I think it happens a lot. I mean, I do, I go to conventions for this very large nonprofit and they have 30,000 people that go to every, uh, almost every city in uh, every year. And we have 30 to 15,000 per city. And every time I would get a, 
like so that that moment we all become it support it doesn't matter who we are what level doesn't matter we are the networking people over with it support and we get all of these calls and most of the calls are related to uh, i don't have internet the internet that they provided with me is not good enough in my room so now i am the responsible person to really help them and we have to bring like these my five devices in a in a bag with them and i'll put it in each 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 room and what you guys just discussed is exactly everything that that's what's happened you know it could it could it could happen too where they bring their laptop and they have to download the wi-fi doesn't work in that location and you you plug in a usb or something it's blocked the flash drive the flash drive is blocked for some reason for group policy or for some reason you can't connect you can't the connect way, to the VPN because of proxy. You know, there's a bunch of crazy things that could happen. Or they connect up to their actual, off, or to get onto the guest network. Yeah. You know, yeah. they didn't put any credentials in, so you gotta somehow run that by somebody quick. Like, can you get, can you, can you add them so they can get, on, get you know, get onto our guest network quick? The, the ticket is extremely involved. You see it's how involved that ticket is. Crazy. It's very involved. Just uh, um, just quick because I mentioned this, uh, Kev. I'm gonna take over screen and just let go. In, yep. In go right ahead. Go ahead. So here, I'm uh, I'm gonna show this quickly to people. So if you guys are interested in something like that, Eddie. So you see right here. I if you just type Jobs Cliche Convention, I actually showed the whole setup inside the convention on how to set up a printer when you're not there. Like this is something brand new, brand new company, brand new people setting their printers and that's how it people learn stuff right you go into a new company you got to know your stuff so i go to this convention i have no clue what type of setup they have they say oh these are 50 printers we got to connect it for these thirty thousand people that are going to come tomorrow I, or three days you got only three days to fix this stuff and now i'm running around and see i'm, I'm showing the whole convention the things you guys are discussing right now I think I have covered almost um, half of this stuff, like how to connect printers on the network, how to use a laptop with the USB, how to bring the data, how to do the VGA stuff. Uh, and that's what we do every year actually for this one company. So mm -hmm. just just a good stuff for while we were talking, people should get into and check I it made, out. I made this ticket because this happens to everybody, by the way. It's a common thing, setting up a video conference or setting up a meeting for somebody. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it, common. To put it out there, Eddie, to put it right towards you, you get this call, you get this ticket, you walk into a conference room, there's 30 people, right, sitting there, and you walk in there, and you gotta walk up, to, you gotta walk up front, to up front now, you gotta be good in front of people, you're gonna walk up front, front, and the lady's gonna say, I need this thing going now, there's 30 people waiting, and the time is running out, I only got an hour in this room, you're gonna sit down, and are you gonna freak out, what would, what, what would, what would you do first? Eddie, she wants. Now remember, now thirty people are staring at you. Yes, you got thirty eyes plus the main person you're there with. You're going, and you are the person that needs to fix this now. You cannot say I can't. I can't. I I can do this like an hour later. No, you are it now. I need this now, or heads are gonna roll. How would you approach that? Hey, Eddie. How 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 would you approach this, professional? Ah! I can't hear Eddie. No, I'm thinking. I don't know. Oh. To I don't. Because I this may happen to you. It happened to me, and I was scared. To happened, to happened, death. I, let me share a story with you, Eddie. While scared I'm to death. thinking about it. Let me share a story. So I, I I had a meeting with with I had a meeting with London, right? I had a meeting with London and I had a user that's not part of our company and they had to present a screen. They had to present their laptop. And I, right away I asked her before she came to the office, I asked her what cable does she have with her? Right. And what computer does she have? Cause you have to know the computer because the computers are different. There's a Mac and then there's windows. Right. So I had an issue where I need to get a Thunderbolt cable for a Mac machine and present it on the screen. So when you, when you do these meetings, they get very involved. Right. So I asked her, what do you have? Said, I have a Mac machine. Okay. You have a Mac machine? Do you have a Thunderbolt cable? Uh, yeah. Was it with VGA? VGA. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. It's going to work with our setup. Right. So then I had to, I went into the meeting room. I plugged in her laptop, her Mac laptop. I plugged in the Thunderbolt cable. I presented the video screen with the, with the display for the Mac. Right. After I did that, she's like, we're not done yet. I need you to connect me with London. So I had to call London. I had to work with London. I had to do a video call with London and call the IT person in London to connect me with a video call back and forth with them. So that was the second setup. 
And then I'm like, okay, are we done yet? No, we need, we need, we need you to do a dial in as well. So then in the same conference room, I had to do a dial in as well. So people could hear each other with the video conference and the dial in. So then I had to put in a 1-800 dial in number as well. And I had to set that up. And then when you log in and create a, uh, when you will log into the, the dial when you basically call the number or whatever, you have to put in the leadership code or the leader pin. And then after that, you're good to go after that. So, you know, that's just something that happened to me. And I had like 40 people in one room looking at me. They were all staring at me. And they're like, Kevin, are you gonna, are you able to do this right now? And I'm just like, uh, yes. And they're all staring at you. They're expecting it, they're expecting it to work. And then what happened was I put the dial in um, I put the leader pin and they gave me the wrong pin and it kept failing. So it kept failing and failing and failing three times. It failed four times after four times. It stopped. It will hang up the phone call. So then I had to get it. I had to call her it person to give me the right pin and they gave me the right pin. And then I finally was able to establish the phone call, the dial in. So just stuff that happens all the time. You'll, you'll be put in the room with like 50 people, 40 people, they're all executives, they're all VP, they might be important people, it may, may not, maybe, may not, doesn't matter who they are, you gotta take care of them. And you have to set up a video room, you have to set up a display, you have to set up a laptop, you don't know. So those, those things do happen in real life and you, you have to deal with it. You know, you have to handle the stress, you have to know how to handle the you know, stress. And I think the one thing we just told you in the last like 10 minutes, you're not gonna read in any book. No book will tell you this. This is real world stuff. And this will happen to you one day, Eddie, or whoever's listening. This will happen to you. And you got to, this is where it's your time to shine. And if you fail, some big wig is going to hear about it. And it's going to get whispered down the line. Hey, Kevin or Steve did not help me out on this. What the heck are you doing with this guy? You know, does, does he know anything? And that's when all the whispers start. So that's when you really shine. And if you, and, and if you can pull it off, you'll be like God. Walking around, I can do anything. I can part the seas. If you screw it up, yeah, your reputation may take a hit for a while until you suck up a little bit more to people. So just be uh, aware of that. It's very, very important. I mean, it's, we're not, I mean, this, we're not, we're not This used to kind of happen, uh, now that I think of it, when I worked at the college, I wasn't the IT guy, but my, they would come up the same thing. They would, they would come with their laptops. They, they come all the time, but they never bring any cables. And then they'd come to me and they'd say, we have a presentation. By the way, the president of the school is coming in, in, in 15 minutes. So we needed it at one, but he's going to be there at 1245. And we, I need to get this going. So I guess the first thing is, uh, I'm just kind of trying to remember from listening to what my boss would say. He's on IT. He's the food guy. But you know, you got to be ready. So I guess I would see what kind of computer they have uh, and see what connections their computer has and see what connections the uh, projector uh, accepts and then get a cable or a cable and an adapter to get my projector to connect to their computer. Now, was there a question regarding Wi-Fi also or just the printer? The, the, the uh, setting up the video conference with them. No, it's just there's no Wi Fi on this. There's no Wi Fi. Yeah, usually there's no, yeah. I mean, it's depends. Yeah. Depends. Depends. Some people will connect to VPN working in another office. Depends. I mean, when you walk into these rooms there, Eddie, what you'll see is that you'll see a big screen on, like a big screen, on like a TV. You have a long cable coming and bound in back of it, running across the floor, coming up through a table, and then they'll have the connections there. And that's when person person will sit down on the laptop on the desk, connect it all up. The first question out of your mouth, I walked into these rooms going, they're like, we don't see anything on the darn screen at all. It's like, well, it's your laptop on. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Power on to the actual TV. There you go. See you later. Bye. Yeah, you know, so it could be something stupid as that. Some TV, some, some, some uh, conference room have a Crestron on it. So you have to touch the Crestron and actually tell it to display on the TV too. So you, you do see that in some environments. Like my job, we have a Crestron. So basically you plug the VGA and then you have to go to the Crestron, the, the iPad touchpad, and you have to hit oh. display, display to comp TV or whatever, you know? That does happen too, so. What is that called? Just, what, how do you spell that, Crestron? What is Crestron, that? yeah, Crestron, C-R-E-S-T-O-N. You will see a Crestron or an iPad. Some people use iPads 
and they actually you have to click on the iPad and it, there's a program built for that for that particular conference room and you display to TV or you click on it you could do video call as well you could do dial in as well and then some of the companies have a restaurant where it have shortcuts on it to call like certain countries and certain places you know it, you know there's a lot it's very involved like depends on where environment you're working and depends where you work you know so and usually with a lot of these uh, conferences that go on is that the user who's going into these conference rooms, if they are calling up a different, a different site with inside of your company, they will get a hold of a contact person. It's just a woman or a man that does this all day long. They just schedule conferences. So the schedule conferences, Kev has a conference with Seattle at one o'clock. So then everything we program for them. Okay. When they walk in or they can hook up and then I usually will hook up and then sign in and then you'll be able to see, you know, Seattle or something like that, you know, so you have to coordinate too. You just can't walk in going, Oh, I, I, I want to talk to freaking Seattle. Okay. Well, hopefully they did their, their like side too, where they got a hold of the right, the right contact person. They set up this meeting. You're walking in or going, do I have to do all this? No, well, you, that's your job to set this up. That's not my job to set this meeting. I can get you going, but I don't know who the contacts are. So I mean, nine times out of 10, the person already did that, but you have some just walk in there going, I'm going to talk to Seattle. You just can't just do that. You have to set it up. Yeah. I mean, some systems are just, are just like that. There and there's some companies that they have a shared calendar or they have a shared room calendar. Right. Yeah. In the shared room calendar, they book the meetings there and they see CIT support. And then you see when the meeting is going to happen in the next couple of days and stuff yeah. like that. So mm-hmm. it does happen too. They have like shared calendars or they have a, they have a, a third party app that they use that manages scheduling rooms, if that makes sense. And you're involved in that somehow. And they put you in that email and then you see when the meetings are going to happen in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, next couple of months. And then you want to do test calls before all that happens just to make sure it's working, you know, so yeah. it does happen too. And you'll walk That's in and that. two people will have meetings at the same time. <laughs> you're like, mm-hmm. yeah, how'd this happen? Uh, I, the guy's got to fight it out. Who wants to be in here? You know? Yeah. You have, sometimes you have an issue where two people are trying to have the same meeting in the same room at the same time. And then that becomes a problem as well. So you might have to move them to a different room and you might have to set up two meetings at the same time. So that does happen too. You know, also or, or, or your, or the other thing is you're sweating because you're sweating <laughs> because I'm not even joking about this. You're sweating because the CEO's printer is not working and you have a video conference at the same time going on at the same. So you have two problems going on at the same time, a video conference and then something else at the same time. And you either stop what you're doing and take care of the printer or you go to the video conference, you know, it, it gets, that does happen too. It does happen yeah. too. So that you know, or three issues at the same time that does happen too. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sometimes for the projector, I, I know this maybe what, but sometimes what I would do is just change the AV. I don't know for old project, because your, your guys have the modern pro, pro, projector. We can control over the iPad. So my company, we have the old projector. So what we do is we like, Go to the projector on top of the projector we can change from av1 to av2 and something like that this is for older projectors yeah and then sometimes just just like what, what steven said that the the, the, the tv is not even on you know it's just something silly as that the tv is not even on. you just have to go power on the tv and that's it and you just walk away and, and the display you know, shows up also too you walk in there sometimes the actual remote control is gone for the projector You're yes like, the heck? Yeah. who took the remote control oh maybe the last presenter maybe the last person that was in here also too what happens if the light bulb blows out? Who's responsible for that? You are. You gotta get. You gotta find out what that light bulb is. You gotta find out. You gotta find out a vendor to go to, or get a hold of somebody that knows about the vendor, about where to get the specific light bulb. And they, they, those light bulbs cost a lot of money for these projectors. Gotcha. They're not cheap. And when you usually get these light bulb projectors, or the, you know these light bulbs for the projectors, they will give you a, a glove. Wear your glove to put the light bulb in because any kind of oil on on your fingers will get on that light bulb and it'll burn out that light bulb sooner than what you wanted to. And then, of course, it's going to cost the company more, you know, like a couple hundred dollars again to buy a new light bulb. So usually it's your responsibility to change that light bulb. You could go, well, whose is it? Well, it's, this is part of IT, right? Yeah, well, it's your job to go get it done. You know, so, also, also, also part of that is when you're doing a video conference, you might be doing a video conference with a new company you never even heard of and you don't even know if it's compatible with their room. Yeah. That does I, happen I, too. That before too. And, and then and what you do is you get everybody on a freaking phone call. 
<laughs> you get like a the old the old like polycon out and go okay here you go guys i mean there's not much you can do but you, you yeah can, you, know, some, you can hear them sometimes they have something they have a setup that's not the same as your setup and it's not compatible and then you're doing a video call and it, and it keeps failing the call keeps failing so then you have to just put everyone on speaker you know uh, Stephen, you talk about projectors. Uh, what about okay? There are also like I heard from one of my friends' company. They are using something like network projectors. Basically, you can use you know you can have a software in your computer, and then you don't need any cable, nothing. You just can use Wi-Fi to project to the to project your thing to the projector, and the projector will project it out. So what about that kind of troubleshooting? That's usually more. I I don't know. Maybe some companies they're still using. Uh, very few companies are still using network projectors. Most people are still using the old projector, but some companies are using network projectors. Maybe maybe even a network projector. Have you? I don't. Kevin? I don't use projectors in my job. I use a Crestron, so I don't use any projectors at all. So. So you're you're saying yeah. with type Crestron, when you log in, you're seeing it up on a TV screen. You're logging in from from like camera to camera. Me, yes. Yeah. It's different. Me, it's different. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the old like CNA place I used to work at, they actually had that. Um, where it was from Cisco. I think right, that thing was nice when the camera was was beautiful, it was big. You know, you would like turn around when, when, when it wasn't in use and it would turn around and look at you going and it would project down. And I mean, that's how we did the rooms. It had like, we scheduled all the rooms in there and stuff like that, which was really cool. I thought that was, that was like state of the art. I'm like, what is this? Like, this is cool. You know, it's like, yeah, it's something new, you know, but I guess that's what you're talking about, Kev, I would imagine. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I have a Crestron and everything. I don't. Literally, I literally I oh, use I use a Crestron. Is, is, is that a brand? No, that's not a brand. It could be any company that does. Any, it, it's a it's it's a it's a tablet that basically you you basically have everything there. It displays everything. You could do a dial in from there as well, and it connects with Polycom. It okay, all right. Yeah, okay, that's what Cisco has. Yeah, it's, I don't yeah. Know Cisco. I don't or you have like a DX seventy. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. A what? You have a DX a DX seventy. It's a big giant TV that looks like a projector, but also has a camera on it, and you could do video calls with that. Yeah, the big cam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the hospital yeah. had like those two for like yeah. a video conferencing and stuff like that. I, I had to set I had to set those up too before in my other job. So yeah, I guess this is just weird things I had to do. It's just... Can you use this to mass control? Is it, is it used to mass control all the projectors, or what was the advantage with this compared to the traditional method? All the projectors are individuals. I mean, you walk into a certain conference room, you don't have, they're not connected up to the network or anything like that. You walk in there, it's just a, a power plug plugged into projector with a net with that VGA cable or something like that running down to a to a table. I mean, that's what you had. It's just basically you can go and buy one out of store, you bring it home and you hook it up the same way, you know, instead of some kind of enterprise projector or something like that, or a bigger, you know, a more commercial projector. Um, is that what you're talk mentioning about? Oh, that means you can use this. What 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 do you call it? Castron uh, to basically like mass control all the projectors. Uh. Yeah, we don't we don't we don't we don't use um. So the way it's set up is is an AV system. So every AV system is set up differently. So ours is is what uh with with something that we use. Do you have a picture, Kev? Can you search it all on on Google and see if you can get a picture of one so you can show yeah. it? Yeah. Maybe then they they can. I kind of know what you're talking about. But maybe somebody at it's home. A, yeah, it's a it's a company, and then you could have your own customized version build on it. So, you see, just to give them like a bird's eye view of what they're looking at. I mean, it's just a, it's here you go. So this, so this is a company. Basically, you and you have different vendors. Obviously, they have their own touch screen, and basically, you could do projected screen, you could do projected TV. You could do video conference with this. You could do a dial in with this. It works together with the Polycom AV system. So that, that's because I work in a hedge fund environment. We use this, you know, but it's different vendors, different companies. Crestron is one company. There's multiple companies that use iPads or, or different touchscreen. So must your, computer, must your computer be directly connected to the projector no. or you don't need to directly connect to the projector? No, no that'd nope. be connected to anything. It's connected to this. This comes with a box and then basically you plug that to the box and then you could display everything in there. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's very expensive, by the way. If you scroll down, this is very this is very expensive, by the way. It's not like one dollar. It's like ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, depending how you. Have oh to yeah, sell. man. So, super so expensive. Expensive. Yeah, super yeah, expensive. So how how you connect your comp? Is it what through there's a proprietary cable that connect your laptop to the tablet? Uh? 
So one end goes to one end goes to the, the box for this, and then the other end goes into the table. The table has a, a table has a table has a network connection, and that box has a there's a box in there as well, and that talks together with the other box, and then you could display and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Yeah, th this is all a network related item. So you will have you'll have a you'll, you, your computer is totally out of this. I mean, the actual system's hooked up to your enterprise network, so you can talk to your other sites. Or it can, you know, talk to whoever is connected up within your network. So um, it's kind of like that. So it has nothing to do with your laptop. If you can, you can walk in there with no laptop, sit, sit down, you dial in, or whatever you do, you you connect up to the, the room, and then the other person on the line has a camera on it as well. And so it's sort of like what we're doing right here, the same kind of concept. And we, we mean we just like hook up and. It works and it's just like high def television. I mean, you would definitely want to go in there looking good those days because <laughs> these TVs are huge. Like they, you know, some, you know, 70 inches, 80 inches. They just put a huge TV sets in there and they just, yeah, bro. but it works really yeah. smooth though. Yeah, it depends, nice. what you, depends on your environment. I want to go more in depth in this because this is going to be, we're going to be here for another five hours. Yeah, so. next question. Next, next ticket. You can just close this out. We'll be here for five hours, you know? To say we beat that one to death, close out. Okay. All right. Next oh, ticket. Urgent. Uh -oh. Urgent. Urgent. Good afternoon. We have a meeting in the boardroom. Can you please help us set it up? The meeting is starting in five minutes, and we need someone to set it up. The analyst brought his own laptop. He needs to project it to the screen. Another one? Yes, another one. <laughs> Come on. It's, it's the same stuff we just talked about. What is this? But it's this time somebody from another another company doing it in your office. I would give Trace the opposite. Day off. The opposite way. Don't we have to find out what kind of cables they need? Mm hmm What kind of computer they they what kind of laptop or yeah. Mm -hmm. Find out what equipment they brought with them, what type of laptop, what the connections on that laptop are. Do we need any adapters to connect to our mm -hmm. video conference thing or projector? Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else? Maybe yeah, allow right. some policies. You know, some do we need maybe some policies. You put it. You know, you just allow it temporary on your on your, on your network for this person. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anyone want to add anything to it? I like to always bring a. a an extension cord because it, it it always seems like when at, when I was at the college, we always needed an, an extension cord because uh, the depending on the setup of the room, the the power. Well, anyway, I guess it's a small. I'm talking about a big room for 600 people. Yeah, that's a, that's that's they, that's, well, that's usually my room. You know, I set up and um, uh, you know, that's usually what I do. I set up I set up red meetings all the time with like 40 people in one room. Sometimes a hundred. Would this be for the laptops uh, to plug into there already? Um, I mean, what would you plug? Yeah, what just would you use that extension. Sometimes cord? you know, there's a. He probably wants to. He probably wants the extension you know, cord I'm, to plug in the battery to charge the laptop. Maybe there's nowhere. Maybe right. there's a reach. You know. Yeah, they're all asking right. for extension cords and never return them, and then my boss gets mad. Yeah, maybe they run out of battery. So you have to plug it in and keep it charged while they're having a meeting. You know, sometimes too. Sometimes too. Think about this. The powers don't work. Talk about talk about having have having cables. Sometimes you want a longer network cable. Why? Because let's say somebody in your company has a laptop. They bring it in there. The Wi-Fi is a little hinky going on. You're like, I can't connect. I can't connect this out to the Wi-Fi, but I can connect you up to the internet to our network through a network cable. Well, all the cables here and the cables across the room there, the actual plug in, you're like, yeah, I can't get over there. Or you have an IP phone. You're like, well, that IP phone is over there. Maybe I can connect up to that if I can't, can't connect up to a wall jack. You know, so you need a longer Cat5 cable or whatever it is, Cat6, Cat5e, whatever, and go on there and hook it up down, get them on the network that way so it's a more solid connection during their meeting so they don't get any kind of dropouts. You see, yeah. you see that a lot too. So a long network cable is always a good thing to have in your bag of tricks. You know, just don't just don't let the user take it at the end of the darn session because then you're out of network cable. But other than that, but. question: I think that at the college, the network jacks, they're I think they're locked. I don't think you can. What what is that called? How is that? 
Locked? We mean locked. You know, not locked like. You can't just plug in your computer into, into a jack. Do, do and, you mean, and get you, mean the you mean you mean the 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 it hasn't been enabled on the on the switch or the router in the IDF room? Is that what you're talking about? I mean that uh, uh, or locked by or locked because of rules by the network admin. That's what I mean by the yeah. How what is that called when you don't have access to the network jack? You you can plug it in, but you're not gonna you know you're not gonna have access. Yeah, it's gonna. You, have, you you might have to, you might have to whitelist that port. You don't know. It's may it might have to whitelist the port. Sometimes the ports okay. get blocked by firewalls. So you might have to whitelist the port. That does happen. In some places, some companies that they they they, they have the ports disabled by default mm -hmm. on the Cisco router, and you have to enable the port, and you have to get it, the network oh. admin to enable it. it does happen. That's what I meant. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Raj? Bro, I think the terminology is called port security, where basically you, mm -hmm. you port go security. Cisco switch and then you lock down certain ports on, on, on certain on certain routes. You see, they, they do it on switches where it's supposed if it's connected to a end user, like a, a room, and you don't want anybody to be plugging in your device, what you do is you go to your switch, you put a port security, you put like what Kev to say, a white rule or a black rule where basically you can find you know certain MAC address you allow, certain MAC address you deny, and then any, so that if anybody cannot just take their, their computer or laptop and just plug it in and get access to the network, immediately get blocked by the, by the switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a network admin that basically blocks you from accessing yeah. the internet. You can't just plug it in directly. That does happen. Right. And that, that goes with Wi-Fi as well. Some people can't connect more. Some people can't connect a device on the Wi-Fi because they're using Cisco Meraki and Cisco Meraki is blocking the, blocking the, that computer or that device from connecting to the Wi-Fi. And then you have to whitelist that, that device through MAC address. That does happen too. But I don't want to go in depth with that, but that does happen too. Yeah. You know, okay. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Raj. Yeah, I have a question. I see also for Steven also. You talk about IP phones. Okay, I see you talk about IP phones, and then when you have an IP phone and you have a computer, you okay, there's one, I think this one is that I asked you that day, but I still have this this doubt on it. Okay, there's a cable that comes from your switch it goes into the ip phone and then there's another cable that comes from your ip phone and goes into the computer and then there's a but why why must you connect it to the computer why cannot you directly just connect to the ip phone and you make the call from you why must you connect another another cable to the computer so if i understand this you have like a cisco ip phone 3750, whatever it is, you turn it over, you have the network part and you have the, the actual the actual PC part. The network part goes from the IP phone into the wall, jack into the wall. That gives it its network, um, that gives its power over ethernet, that's what powers up the phone. And basically that's what gives you the phone on the network. The switch, the other switch part of it on the back, it's a PC part where you plug in your computer for the, from the laptop whatever it is, desktop, right into the back of the Cisco IP phone and the computer part, which would be like a switch of it. And then that hands it an IP address to get you onto the network as well. Um, there's really not much more to think about it. Oh, I mean- Okay, that means what? Your your computer and your phone will get a different IP address or it, they will, both will get the same IP? It will get the- um, I don't get a different, it should, it might get a different IP address. It might not, depending if the phones are on a different subnet or not, um, or a different VLAN. I don't know if, I don't know. It does have a little DHCP, it does have a server inside, but it acts like a switch. Um, you would almost have to look at the phone when it's plugged in at, at, at that IP address, what it's pulling from the DHCP server, and then look at the computer to see if it if you're on the same. Uh, Not really I sure. Steven, but is there any phone that no need a computer? It can automatically get the IP address from the phone without a computer attached to it. I don't think so. I I never seen one yet. Kev, have you? No. No. I've never seen one. Um. I never seen one. No, I'm sorry. I never see. I never seen one yet. Do that. You would normally um, got to use two cables. You need two two uh, network cables when you're poking up a, a phone, like a new IP phone or a used IP phone. If you're gonna swap them out or something like that, it's the one that goes from the wall. 
to the back of the IP phone and the IP phone to the Grab, grabs an internet and then it and then you plug the second cable to the computer and that goes to the back of the phone, you know, like right. it gives an IP address. Yeah. Because yeah, the, phone, the phones are hooked up to a different DACP server. A, what's that called, Kev? Um, because there, there, there are different, the, the, the thing is when you plug in a phone on the, on the network, there are different VLANs set up for the phone, like for the phone versus a computer. It's not set up the same way. It's different. It's different. And you have to, you have to enable that port that you're plugging in the port to. Like if you're porting into port 34, for example, on the Cisco router, you have to enable the, the port on that router to enable voice over IP. Cause some, some companies only have internet and then some companies, some co so when you plug in a, a phone, for example, it might not come live because that port that you, that you have it plugged into is not enabled for voice over IP. It's only enabled for computers only. So it's a network thing. Uh, I see, Kev. Then if you say that computers and phones are in a different VLAN, that means they're in a different subnet, then how is it possible that a computer can give the IP phone an IP address when they, both of them are in a different subnet? So like I told you, it depends how the network is set up. Like in my in my network is set up, when I worked in my other job, we had we had a VLAN and the VLAN set up that it, it provides an IP address for you know both the phone and the computer. I'm not a network guy though, by the way. I don't do networking at all. But that's just usually that's usually what I see because I, I work with network admins. Typically they, they, they do whitelisting, they do rules, and they do VLAN changes. And then if you when you do VLAN changes, you have to you have to allow certain ports for it to work with a computer and then some of them work with phones, you know. It's, it's how you how your network is set up. So Okay, okay. Okay, thanks, Kev, for the answer. Yeah, and there's separate VLANs and everything. So it's, it's all it gets complicated. It is complicated. If you if we don't like what definitely would be definitely would if you we have a network admin guy, that would be a, a good question for him or her. Um I don't think I think most of us do like like desktop support or sysadmin stuff, you know, or or junior admin, we don't really touch networking in depth, you know, with a Cisco router and stuff like that, you know? And I believe the, the Cisco phones log into a different server. It's a VoIP server, but the phones connect up to it to get the IP address from, I'm trying to Google it right now and I can't think of the, I can't think of the term, what the terminology they use, but it's um, to actually to achieve to get that I know they use the SIP, the actual SIP protocol, the serial initiation protocol. Um, I can't think of what they call that. I used to know it, and I kind of forgot it. Just give me a second. Yeah, so it's it's how it's how you it's a network it's a network thing. So definitely a network thing, but. Uh, I cannot really answer that question in depth because obviously uh, I don't do networking as much as other people. So, yeah, but the IP address comes from a certain server, a DHCP server. And I, oh, I've seen it on the phones, on the Cisco phones and stuff like that. I call it, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> it's called something. How it works. Anyway, let me let me get yeah. back to the ticket. All right. Give me a second. I'll share my screen again. Mm -hmm. so you got you guys have any questions about that video conference thing? <laughs> Eddie? No? Nobody? Okay. All right. We'll go to the next ticket then. Donnie says Cisco Voice Gateway. Cisco Voice Gateway. No, what happened to you? What happened to you? You walked outside. What happened? You disappeared on me. Can you guys see me? Yeah, yeah we see you. Outside. Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm not. I'm not watching the chat or anything because my son just came out, so I had to walk with him. Yeah, yeah. I'm, about, you know? I'm, about to, I'm about to wrap it up right here. We'll, one last ticket, and we're good. We're done after this. Okay. So, let me uh, let me close this ticket. It's fine. I'll close it for now. We already discussed this. All right, here we go. Next one. My computer is not working. Fix it now. Look at that. Look at that with the exclamation points and everything. Bro, this is very generic, man. There's so many reasons. How? What is the reason like this? Is this very generic? Gen, general? I keep doing that on purpose because those are tickets that you would see in real life. People don't don't really explain well their tickets. So that's why I do it in real life. 
I see. Then if I will ask him whether is it firstly is it like is it as desperate as a blue screen of death? We don't. Uh, a... let, let's read the ticket first. Let's analyze the ticket. My computer keeps locking me out. Can we please resolve this ASAP? I can't get any work done. It keeps saying this reference account is currently locked. Oh, this one you have to go to group policy and unlock the account. What? Policy. Group policy. Nah, what? Come on. What, what are you the... doing? Policy. We go oh, to maybe you go, yeah, maybe yeah. you go into the settings of the user and then you unlock unlock the account. Settings? What, what? are you talking about? Settings of what? Do we go to Active Directory? See if he's oh, locked. Oh, we're getting closer. Yes. Yes. Look, my computer keeps locking oh, me out. Can it, you please resolve the, this ASAP? I can't get any is more. Is it the than... Active Directory user and computer? Active Directory user and computer? There you go. Yes. And what you there do? you go. What did you do next, though? Why? Why yeah, would Steven, you? Go to, why, why would you go to group Steven, policy? This I learned from your video, bro. I learned this from your video. Oh, hey, Ken, yeah, there we go. <laughs> what do you have? That bowl stuff. <laughs> Look what I did. Can you see my? Can you see my camera? Yeah, yeah, I see it. I made a a nice thing about you. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start to start to uh, shoot people right now with this. <laughs> what is that? A crutch? What is that? <laughs> This is like a little steel from a bed, and I put like a little, uh, uh, it's like a, like a band. Like, <laughs> oh, it's funny, man. Nothing. Go ahead, guys. Continue. There are Kelly together, man. Yeah. So obviously, you won't do you won't do group policy. That doesn't make any sense. So Eddie, what will you do, Eddie? That's like you said. We go to Active Directory, uh, users and computers. How would you get and, there on the computer? And go to user. How would you get there on the computer? Where would you go first on the on a server? server? Server manager. Yep. And I'm then, not sure. Uh, I'm not showing anything because I want to make sure you know how to do it. You know, I'm not gonna show anything on the VM or open up a. You VM. know what? You know what? I'm gonna stop Eddie right there because you would not go to server manager. Do you really think they would let you touch the darn domain controller? Do you really think they will let Eddie touch that domain control? You're going to have the RSAT tools on your... So I'll computer. go to RSAT. Use RSAT. There you go. You're not even going to see server manager. They're not even going to let you touch or uh -oh. smell that. They're going to say, get the hell away from that. I'll tell you right now. You got to use your own tools on your own computer. Unless it's so me. go ahead. <laughs> All right. Seriously, <laughs> right? I mean, Kev, really? Come on. I mean, they're going to let him go let him, let him go into the damn server. They wouldn't let me go to server manager. Probably not even let you go to server manager. Unless you have access to the physical box. I do. Well, you can do anything, I'm sure. But in the real world, you no, don't. No, you can't. You can't do that in the real world. Don't, 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 don't go with what I'm saying. Right. So you go to RSAT tools and you go to, where okay. do you go to, Eddie? We're going to go to RSAT, um, uh, users and computers, mm -hmm. then user. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And, uh, we can search for his find user right in the in the sub menu. Mm -hmm. Then key his name in. If it pops up in the box, mm -hmm. you hit yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, it should. Come on, come on, Eddie. You know this, Eddie. Oh, come on, come man. On. Let me stop Eddie right there. You said the three before. If it pops up in the box, what happened if it does? If it didn't pop up in the box, what's what is the problem? You mean if it doesn't pop up in the box, if, yeah. if, if it's not, if the box it says locked out is checked? Oh, no, I mean, you're looking for the user and you can't find the user and, and, and you're fine there and it doesn't pop up. What is wrong? Oh. Maybe he's not connected to the... He, no, he, no, 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 no. I'm looking right in the find box. When you click on the find box, yes. if you don't see a you, if you don't, if you're like, wait a minute, the user's not there. What's the first thing your eye should look for on there to make the change? What change should you make in that find box to make sure you find the user? It's not case sensitive, is it? No, right? No. There's something in there that you need to change to look for users, computers, printers, blah, blah, blah. You want to make sure that you're looking for what? Kevin, am I wrong on this or uh, or not? Stop me if I'm wrong. No, um, uh, I I agree with you, but uh, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm going I'm going over typically because uh, he said he went to users, the folder users, and searched it that way. I know but that, I know that the find though. 
You said about the finding part. Oh, the find, yeah. The, the find I mean, is- Let's just the, say what? Okay, you're gonna open up a user's container and look through 2,000 people? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. Obviously you won't do that. You're obviously gonna, you, you go into find. find. Right, but then- That's, why, that's why I said, I said click, uh, use the find yeah but you click find and then then the, the user doesn't show up why is he right. not showing up when exactly. you search for him that's what i'm getting at oh what you search for him what's wrong in that find box eddie what's you have I mean, two sections one on the left one on the right on the find box why why and what do you do there because it's very important if you're in a rush something simple as that you'd be like Wait a minute, the user's not here. Oh, do I have to create it like like do I have to recreate his account? Or am I just doing something weird on my end? You know, before you you know, you, you, you can take this to the next level and really mess them up. Is it easy to select the wrong group? That's why the user cannot be seen. What? No. Oh, okay. So you have two sections. The one on the left hand side is users, it's users, users, distribution groups, whatever, users and groups basically. Uh, when you're searching on the left hand side, on the right hand side, there's another, there's a, there's a tab on the right hand side when you're searching for someone. So there's two tabs, one on the left, one on the right. The right one, you need to change that. What are you, what are you supposed to do to find the user? You can't find them for some reason. Why can't you oh, find change them? Change from distribution to security. Uh, no. Hmm. I. Yeah, you can't be stuck on this. This is a simple question. You're going to see this on a job interview, by the way. It could be, this could easily turn into a job interview question, by the way. Yeah, it could. I mean, it's something simple, guys. I mean, just think about what you're trying to look for and what it's the box is telling you. I mean, it defaults back, I think, after you close it. I think, Kev, right? I think it defaults back to what you need to, to do. But sometimes the right side or the left side is right but the right side is wrong the right side is wrong you have to tell yeah. it where to go the right side is usually gives you kind of like a weird thing i mean all right we'll give you this on the left hand side it usually defaults to users um container and blah blah something else but on the right side you have to change it where the issue might come into play mm -hmm. you, you gotta, gotta know it. what to do with that to go oh looking for computers or looking for users or what do you where are you looking for them? So I don't I don't remember what's on the right side of the, of the thing of the of that dialog box that pop up box. Captest going to show us here. Maybe I'll Google it, look it up. Ah, uh, Captest going to show us. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just opening it up. This this there's a left and the right hand side, and this is very important when you it's attention to detail as a technician, as an IT person. Because when you're in a rush, you may, I've done this a million times. Like you, I'm like, wait a minute, it's not there. Especially when it comes to computers. I'm like, it's not there. It's like, oh, well you got, uh, the, okay, hold on one second. Ah, yeah, a, there it is. Detail. It's attention <laughs> to detail. Very, is it, is it very you, important. Is it you never uh, type your name properly, then you press one button that will put the name correctly for you? No. No. Nope. I don't see anything but the ticket on my screen. Yeah, I'm opening it up right now. Oh, okay. I'm putting up the server right now. Yeah, it's supposed to, there's something on the right hand side. You have to change that. If you don't change that, then you won't, you will never find the user. Mm. Yep. That's why I brought it up, Kev. That's the only reason why. No, it's good. It's good that you brought it up. It's I mean, good. it seems like they don't, I mean, people don't, I mean, even, even probably you and I do this all the darn time too. We just, yeah, we, we fat finger it and the person will show up. <laughs> we fat finger the name and the, the, the name of the person, the, the, the person's there. You put the name in and they don't show up. But they are a user. They have an account and everything. Why the hell they're not showing up? You know, that does happen. So. Yep. Yeah, what, what's going on with this thing? Why is it not showing up? Why is the user not showing up? Did they get, did they get their account got deleted or disabled or something? It's nothing to do with that. You know, that does happen though. So. And once you see it, Eddie, you'd be like, oh yeah, that one, that kind of makes sense. That kind of, that kind of makes sense. Why, why, why didn't I talk about that? You know. Just, and then the light bulbs go off. Then you know, then they might be like this. The light bulbs go on. You're you're not, you're you scratch you your head. find the domain in the maybe maybe the user is a local user and it's not a domain user, so you find it in the wrong place. What? No. no. Nope. See that? Yeah, thank God we brought this up. Donish would be proud of us. He's not on, but he, he would be proud. 
Don should be like, Don should be like, good. That's a good How question. You guys actually. learned that. Well, Steve and Kev Tech kind of pounded it in this one day. Yeah, because you're gonna see it a lot in IT where people fat finger the name or the name is put incorrect and they can't find the user for some reason. Like, why can't I find this user? You know. So well, I'll give you, I'll give you something. So sometimes I'll show you. Well, I'm gonna share my screen right now. So you look at the right hand side. You see it now? Anybody can chime in here. All right, Eddie. What do you see first up there? What's it say there? The first I'm going to zoom. Hold on, because I I I'm old, and these are not reading glasses. Let me zoom this. Okay. It's the old man eye side. Oh, man. <clears throat> it's okay. Morris. What's it finding first of all? This is users, contacts, and groups. Okay. We see all oh, yeah. that when he, he hits that drop down window. Now you can change what you are trying to find okay. right so, but now the next part is what should we click on find and and, and bring down the menu and, and narrow it down to users well you well you are at users you're doing that already uh, that, so okay there is no i thought when you clicked find i thought i saw something uh else there. Okay, right. ahead, click, click on find and show them the rest of the stuff in there yeah, so if you if you if you do find here, there's users, computers. You know, sometimes we search for people on on uh, on on Active Directory, and we accidentally hit computers by accident, and then we can't find the person. Oh, we're like we're, we get dumb, we, we get like silly and dumb sometimes. We accidentally put computers by accident, and we're searching for a user, not a, not a computer. The the hard part is is that if you when you put in the computer name there or a printer name, and you click on the wrong thing, and you you change that fine thing, it'll clear out everything you, you like typed in. So you got to start over again, which is a pain in the butt. Yeah, but so look, can't, can't find that. You can't find can't, it, right? Yeah. That is a good one, bro. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. I want, I want to ask you something. Uh, and something then, wait, 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 wait. Let's on. answer this first. We need oh, to answer the question. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the answer now because you guys, I don't know what's going on today. You guys, you guys, need, you guys need to have more coffee. So what's it, Eddie, what's it, what's it looking in? We're, do you see where it says find users, contacts, and groups in what folders or in containers? I guess it'd be containers, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Or what's it finding? What? Tell us. What? 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 Like is that? You're looking at right there. But are we in the right domain? That's what I was saying. Or the right network? Do is that his domain or what? What? What is that? Kevin dot local. Kevtech.local. Is that this is domain name? Is that a, uh, that's a, is that the domain or correct. the local area network? That is correct. Now that's the domain. Now if he clicks the arrow button down, click click on the arrow. Now you see where it says entire directory. Oh. I always use that catch-all because oh. then it checks the whole entire database going. Because who knows where this user is put. So then it'll pop him up no matter he's in a different site, a different domain. Um, well, a different, I, I, I don't know about domain, but um, it'll search a whole entire Active Directory going, there he is. So it's, I, I always use the entire directory thing as like a catch all. But I didn't know that was there, that there was an entire directory thing. There's good. Yeah, yeah. and then, and then some, some, sometimes, sometimes you'll have multiple domains in one setting. So right. You, might, you yeah. might have multiple domains. Um, you have a forest, so you have multiple domains. You have two domains, three domains, and you're searching for somebody, and they're not on that domain. So you yeah. have to hit the drop down and then click the other domain to search for them. They may not be in Kepta.local. They may be in Donish.local or Steven.local, and you have to search for it that way. You know. That's why I always do entire domain. If you do the entire domain, Eddie, you'll be good. Also, when it comes to computers as well, anything in there, click the entire. The entire don't the idea or whatever the heck it said there the entire directory and you'll it will find it if it doesn't find it then you know that's not there <laughs> yeah so you'll 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 have you'll see this in a lot of environments people people are trying to look for somebody and and they're not they're not anywhere on any of these folders and they're somewhere else on the yep. whole mm, that's correct. For some reason that does happen yep. that, that happens a lot so, especially when it comes to computers 
These computers can go anywhere. If you have a lot of sites, it could have been it could have been moved, and it's like, why isn't it pulling it? And all of a sudden, it uses the entire directory and it finds a computer, or it finds a user, or it finds a printer. And you, printer you, too you, is a big thing too. Sometimes and you have you, you have this drop down right here, and there's multiple folders and multiple drop downs, and you're clicking the wrong one, so you just click the entire directory. Yeah. Simple and that, as that. Said, that'll, that'll, that'll like save you every single time. Yeah, entire directory. It searches everything from top to bottom. That would so, have been I wish it would default to that, but it doesn't. It doesn't do that. Yeah. If you, so if you, if you, if you, if you see, if you put entire directory and you close out of it and you do find again, Does it, it doesn't do it. It goes back to this. Yeah, no. For some I suppose reason. there is no way to, to set that. I guess I'm sure there's some goofy way to do it, but I never you know, know, so that that's, that's, it's a good question to ask by the way, but what uh, Steven asked. So uh, I'll, hopefully that answers your question because that does happen. That there you does go, happen. Eddie. You just answered it, man. You're the man of the day. You're that does happen. Man. Raj, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, I want to ask you something. When you, you need me to break, you want me to break dance? To the... <laughs> maybe, bro. Maybe when you uh, when you reach ten k, I'll, I'll break dance for you. Okay. Uh, uh, when you add a computer to the Active Directory, they, there's something called Net BIOS name. What is the difference between a Net BIOS name and a computer name? Is it the same thing or is it different? And then what's the difference between that and DNS? Is is it all the same or um, it's quite confusing to me? When it comes to that BIOS names, you're only you're capped off at 16 characters. The 15 char 15 characters you can actually use. The 16 character is actually hidden. It um, I think it tells a 16 character represents something. Um, it tells the computer what service it uses. Is that what it is, Babcow or something mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Uh, nobody uses NetBIOS's names anymore, um, but it's still in there for backwards compatibility with an Active Directory. Um, but um, yeah, because it only has a 15 character limit on it that physically you can put down a, a, a name of a computer or stuff like that. They don't really use it anymore. That's kind of like old school. That's kind of like back in the day with we used to use wins and stuff like that. And, you know, those days are gone. Um, you don't have to worry about that as much. <laughs> Thank God. That's when DNS kicked in and kind of took over for NetBIOS. And stuff like yeah, that. You have, the, you have the whole thing with IPv4 and IPv6, and then yeah. how they translate how they translate letters into numbers. Obviously, you won't use hexadecimal hexadecimal when you're creating an IP address. You know, it's very it gets really annoying. So that's why they created IPv4, IPv6. You know, blah blah blah. And usually, when you guys are setting up your domains, it'll, you can see in there. Oh, say the NetBIOS name when you're going through the setup process of converting a, a computer into a domain controller. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's just there for backwards compatibility. I think with, with Windows 2000 and below or something. That's correct. Like that. yep. yep. So don't worry about it too much anymore. You know, kind of move on from that. Don't kill yourselves. That was something you learned. Yeah, like, don't kill, don't kill yourselves. Uh, and then I, I if I go into if I go into IPv4 and IPv6, you already know there's there's CIDR, then there's Class A, then there's Class B, then there's Class C, then there's Subnet Mask, then there's Default Gateway. Then there's DHCP, then there's DNS, then there's re release, renew, reservations, you know, it gets. I, I see, Stephen, yeah. then uh, you, you talk about NetBIOS having 15 characters. So, so there's two questions I want to ask you. Firstly, does that mean that DNS can have like, like unlimited characters you can put? And second question I want to ask you is, so NetBIOS is not equivalent to computer name. Even you have a NetBIOS or you need to have a DNS, you still need to have a computer name end of the day. You know what? When it comes to computer names, Kev, am I right or wrong on this? Can you name a computer nowadays more than fifteen characters? I don't I think so. Not, I have not tested. I think I think I think you asked this question before, Raj, in another video. We were I think it about caps it. off, right? Doesn't it cap off at um? Bring up um. Go to the uh. Bring up uh, the properties of the. To go into the change computer area so you can go in to see if you can change the name go to properties of that and click on change settings um uh it's like it's, it's gonna lock us out um well how many are there how many characters are there well go back to that how many characters? a certain amount of characters it could be before it starts to complain about the name of it right isn't it fifth how many are on there is there 15 there 
14, 15, 14, I think. There's 14. So I wonder if that's still a net uses a net bios. Like you cannot, you can't, you can't add any more characters than that than 15. With 16 being yeah. like a special character. Uh, uh, guess why I'm asking this because my company has some computers that are still using net bios, like very, very wow. old computers. Like what do you say? Below well, you, you, you have, you work in a really strange environment. You need, you need <laughs> to run quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a strange environment. <laughs> then there's some computers that need to move over to DNS. And now we are planning to move the old computers to uh, DNS because we want to put a standardized way. So that's why I'm asking you whether, can you just port over the name to DNS or is there some other way you must do? That'd be a good Donna's question, I That's think. That's a Donna's question right there. I don't, I don't think much about right. that. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah, yeah that one's, yeah. Uh, yeah, then another, another, another question I have with you. Uh, you talk about VDI in your company. Uh, oh God, here we go with VDIs. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> is VDIs, what well, you use in your company? Uh, so VDIs are where you store the operating system on the server and then you host it on your computers. So is it you, you need to have a, a good network bandwidth behind it? For VDIs? Well, uh, yeah, VDI is uh, virtual yeah. desktop infrastructure. But you yeah, gotta we, remember, though. I mean, with those VDIs, right, Kev? I mean, they're just sending they're they're just sending the actual screen scrapes of the virtual desktop. So really, you, you need a good, of course, you need, good, you need a good server yeah, for that. Yeah, you good need server a good, and yeah. good internet for that. It's a virtual yeah. desktop. So VDI is virtual desktop interface, um, and usually the way it's set up is you have a Citrix port that you got, log into. And you click the virtual desktop, and then the desktop launches on Citrix. So a lot of companies use Citrix. Um, yeah. Some companies use VMware. Um, depends how you have it set up. And some companies have even overlapped. They have it overlapped with a they over they, they they connect Citrix together with VMware, and then the desktop you're clicking on is running on VMware, not Citrix, but it's connected together at the same time. So I've seen that set up before as well. So it depends how you have it set up in your environment. Oh, sure but you it's at, obviously, it's on a server. You need to have a server for that. And you need to have a good internet connection for that. And you need to have the resources for that. Otherwise, you know, the server, will, you know, you're going to have issues. Oh, so you that. pair with a thin client together with a VDI. So like a device that don't have an operating system with it. And then you pair it up with a VDI. Yeah, it's, a, it's, basically on a, it's basically on the server. And then you, you have, you have um, uh, something called persistent versus non-persistent uh, VDI servers. Which basically means that what well, basically what that means is basically any anytime someone connects to that VDI or that server, it grabs it grabs a license, it grabs a desktop from that server, and then if they log out, it gives a license back to the server. So it depends how you have it set up in your environment. I mean, I don't want to talk about this in this video; it's too complicated. So, and I I done that setup before, by the way, but that was like a while ago, and I'll probably make a video on it at some point about Citrix VDI. Talking you know, about Zen, de Zen, app, Zen app servers and desktops and all that good stuff. You got to remember too, I mean, Citrix, Citrix has been around for years. I mean, even what, 10 years ago when there wasn't a lot of memory and RAM on these computers, but it would run on a very minimal computer and it would run very well. I mean, I've seen a couple of videos where a lot of old guys were talking and they used to use it 10, 15 years ago and it would run smooth. You yeah. have, they're always sending the actual screen scrapes to you. Yeah, you but you, you you wouldn't run that. You wouldn't run that for a trader. They would have a local desktop because if they're a trader and they're working on a virtual desktop, the resources can't handle what they're running. You won't do that on a virtual. You won't do virtualization on a on a computer that's like a local computer for someone that is a trader because if you do that, it, it starts to lag. It starts to crash. It just can't handle what you're running. And even the CPU and everything bottlenecks. So what, what Citrix doing. uses the ICA protocol, right? Mm -hmm. Was yep. it the interconnection authority or something? What is yeah, that? yeah. Oh, so right, you won't you won't see you won't see anyone that does that works in a financial firm or hedge fund or whatever, or any of these big companies that do trading. You won't see them running a virtual desktop for Bloomberg, or for trading or for any of those applications because if you run it under virtualization, it doesn't work well with it. It doesn't like it. So mm -hmm. you you would have a you would have these companies work with, have a HP, Intel, Xeron, Xeron computer, those big fat computers that have like 64 gigs of RAM or 128 gigs of RAM. And they have two, two, two SSDs, terabyte, 
with with a 12 core processor because if you if you have something run like that virtual virtualized set up like that it will crash everything like their, their app will crash they'll have lag they'll have latency they have a bunch because i i we tried testing this for someone we tried virtualizing everything and it doesn't work so we you know we have to give them a local desktop with dedicated ram and everything you know and, and that computer's on the domain obviously you know it's just just a thought you know just going over based on my experience so Hopefully that answers your, your question, Raj. You gotta remember too, some of these uh, desktops or laptops that people use, they only have, especially when you hook it up to the Cisco IP phones. Um, what was that? When you hooked up to the Cisco IP phones, they were, sometimes they're capped out. They don't have a gigabit ethernet connection on those things. They, they only have a 100 megabit ethernet connection yeah that's why you that's why you have a you have a was a uh you know how there's a thin client and there's a thick client you have a thick client set up for those users that are doing trading and they have like a they don't have a dedicated they don't have a dedicated net card you get an um you get a third party net card put it in there bump it in there and then plug it in and then they have that speed that they need and then you have to go into the ipv phone settings on the phone and make sure that it's, it's running you know the gigabit speed not running 100 by 100 or or duplex or whatever, you know? So that does happen too, so. I, I see, Th uh, thanks Kev for answering my question because mm -hmm. the, because my friend who uh, was working in a bank and he was talking about VDIs because in a, usually in a very secure area, they, they don't want uh, people to be assessing the putting a thumb drive. I mean, I know you can do it with group policy, but they don't want any any files to be stored, stored locally on the computer in case if someone like took the computer and, steal it or something i know you can have bit locker or something like that but they, yeah you could you could put vdi you could put a vdi and you could put a group policy on it and then everything is blocked and all they yeah. have access to is just the desktop and they can't click on the c drive or do anything they yeah, have yeah, access true. to the share drive zone you could do all that too yeah on the yeah. vdi that's, that's and what my, what's my friend in a bank he's working this is what he's doing so the system administrators put everything on the servers and then when the clients when the workers come in to work they're actually pulling the operating system the files everything from the servers and, yep, uh, yep that's exactly there. what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. but and the then, thing is, and, and you have a portal already. too. You have a portal where you log into, and you need to, you need to have an RSA token or two factor authentication. You have to log into that portal yeah, yeah, correct, correct. and then make right. sure that's that it's actually you. It's not some random person trying to log in. Yeah, that's that's a secure, very secure area. They always do this. I'm thinking because this is my my friend was working in a small company, so not really big. But if you work in a big company, VDI definitely will not scale well, right? Because it takes a lot of network bandwidth at the back end. Depends on the depends on the company. Depends what they have. Depends what they're using it for. Depends on the company. We 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 run. We have ADIs, but it's only for specific people in specific departments. It's not for everyone. Some people just have regular computers. Some people have just have regular laptops. It depends who you are. Does that make sense? I see. I see. Thank you, Boo. Thank you. Because so we much. have. A, I have a combination on my job. I have a combination of running. I am running VMware. I am running Citrix VDIs and I am running laptops as well. And I'm running desktops as well. So depends on the company. I have a little bit of everything. So, and it, obviously, you know, it depends who you are. You know, some people are traders, so they have local desktops, you know, it depends who you are. So depends who you are. Mm -hmm. So like this, this ticket, so their account is locked out. You unlock their account. They should be able to log in. Right. Right. Eddie. Yes. Shaking your head. I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> Can't hear you. Yeah. So you unlocked your account. I said, what? What if? What if they? You know, what if? What if they? Um, what if? What if they? They keep getting locked out. You change the password, obviously, right? Yes. No. If they keep getting locked out, what? Do you change the password? Do you, have them, do you unlock the account, have them try again, or do you change the password? No, we we unlocked it, and then we have them try again. We have them try to log in again. And what if they keep getting locked out? They log in again, they get locked out. What could be the issue? Maybe they're, maybe they're typing in the wrong password. Should I... Uh...
So what will you do? What, what will be your rec remedy for this? What are they getting locked out? What if, what if, what are they getting locked out? And they're typing the right password. What do you think is happening? For example, that's an example. I'm just saying what well, as an example. And they keep getting maybe, locked out of their account. Password expired or something and we got to. No, password will not be expiring. So they're getting locked out every time they log in to their account. And um, they, they are typing the right password. They log in and they're getting locked out. Why is that happening? Why would someone keep getting locked out if they're logged in already? Maybe their account is, maybe someone accidentally disabled their account. Mm -hmm. No, that wouldn't be it. What do you think is happening to their account? Why do they keep getting locked out of their account? Um, maybe is it there some interference with group policy? You love that group you policy. Love group policy. <laughs> nothing to do with group policy. Well, I was the group policy guy a month ago, and then Don was like, no, stop at the group policy. All right. Uh, I, know where, I know where he's coming from. Uh, uh, so so they're, getting, they're, they're able to log in, but they're getting locked out for some weird reason. Why is that happening? And they're typing. How do we know they're typing the right password in? We have to. They log in. They it? get in. They get into their computer. They log in for a little bit, and then they get locked out again. Oh. What's happening there? Why does that keep happening? And this happens in real life, by the way. This happens in, in IT all the time. Really? All the time. So they're, they're logged in, and they're getting locked out. They're logged in already to the computer. They're able to log in, and they're getting locked out. What do you think is happening? I don't even know the answer to this one. This is an interesting one there, Kevin. Oh. I don't know. So they log in and getting locked out. You, you you unlock their account, they log in, you're getting, they, you log in, they log in. So they logged in already and they get locked out and then Outlook's not working. They log in again, they're getting locked out. You can't open Outlook, you can't do anything because they keep getting locked out. They're logged in already, so they keep getting locked out. And then you're like, I'll lock you on card right now. And then you unlock your account and they're still getting locked out. What's going on there? Has nothing to do with the credentials managers, is it? The credential manager on there, maybe getting them, if they change the password, it didn't update the password on the other things. It's getting locked them out. But they were credential they manager. They didn't like, they didn't like change the password though. Hmm. I'm stuck too, Eddie, so. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know where Kev's going with this. Exactly. I mean, you usually it's locked out on the computer. You're going to lock it on the, on the active, on active directory. This happened to me, actually, a few days ago, actually. It keeps locking. So as you're working, it just trips to lock right away? Or what makes it lock? There, He's working on his computer, and then you unlock his account, and then he's good after that. And then it locks again after that. It gets locked out again. So it keeps on locking itself. I've seen that. I've seen that, but I don't know what the remedy is for that exactly. And then you you have to you have to figure out you have to figure out what's locking him out. It has nothing to do with changing the password and nothing updating the password inside your phone or anything like that. Nope. That I'm lost. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I, I, is it is it maybe because some uh, administration uh, turn on something called NEP? Network access policy. So basically, we never turn on your firewall. We never turn on your access. Nothing to do with firewall. Nothing to do with firewall. Nothing to do with that. How did you get to that? <laughs> How did you get to a fire? I think I, I had this issue with Damn. someone, by the way. I had this issue in real life with someone. So they they they're sitting on their computer, right? Like literally, I'm not even joking. Yeah. They're sitting on their computer, yeah. huh? and they're on the computer. They're typing an email in Outlook, and then they get locked out, and they have to close Outlook. I unlock their account. I close I close Outlook. We reopen it, and Outlook is working fine. And then five minutes later, they get locked out again. And that keeps happening over and over again. And nothing to do with their account password expiring. And nothing to do with their, nothing to do with that. They know what their password is. They put their password in, they hit OK, and they're back on Outlook running again. And they get locked out again. You ever seen that before? No. They have to lock out and go back into it? Is that a, a, like a screensaver power saving? Option. Nothing to do with you that. Put, like, 
Turn? I don't know what I'm saying. I I don't know, Kev. Tell us the answer because this is a very interesting one. How did you solve this? You do when you when someone's account gets locked out. You know when someone get someone's account gets locked out, you use a program, you use an application to see where they're getting locked out from. You know that, right? There's programs to do that, right? There's programs to see where they're getting locked out of. So you might want to first check that to see what's locking them out. So it's not their computer like a log, that's locked. Check the log. Yeah, you check the you check the you know we have the account lockout status application right, which is what I have on my VM. You check that. You could use that to run the tool. So I ran a tool to see what's locking him out. And where do you see? I ran this? I ran the I ran a tool to see what's locking him out. It tells you it shows what computer he's being locked out of. And this is where the lo the account lockout tool. Some and where that where is that located? That you have to download that. It comes from Microsoft. So oh. some, some companies have their own lockout tool applications that they use, and then it tells you where they're being locked out from. So I, I really? every time he kept getting locked out, this happened to me. Every time he kept getting locked out, it tells you where they're being locked from. Really? Yeah. So you, may I, to, you may have to do a video on that because I've never seen that in my life. I, I made a video on it already. Really? Yeah. So I, I, um, I noticed that he was getting locked out from another computer that he logged into on the same day. This program is called Account Lockout Tool? Yes. Really? So he he was logged into another computer he logged into earlier that he didn't tell me about. And then his 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 what happened was this is something weird. What happens what happened was is somebody somebody was trying to log into that other computer, the the other computers, he has two computers, the second computer that someone else was trying to log in as him on the second computer. Was one of his friends, one of his buddies, because they were sharing the same desktop. So you know how you go into a user, you log in, it has their name already there, and you just put your password in to log in. You know how you have your account, you have your like your name, whatever your name is, and you just log into it. He, this other user kept logging in as him and putting in the wrong password and it kept locking him out. So then I had to go to the other computer, restart the whole computer, and then have them log in as themselves because they kept locking out his account. Have you ever seen that before? Nope. <laughs> I actually just downloaded that freaking tool right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna open the darn thing up and see. I never I never knew you could even download this tool. I never even heard of this tool. So he so he was using his computer, right? And I'm like, what is going on? Why is he getting locked out of his computer? So he's on his Outlook. Outlook works fine. And then he gets he gets locked out. I unlock his account. I unlock it, right? So I unlock his account and it's working fine again. Then five minutes later, it gets locked out again. Then five minutes again, he gets locked out again. And I'm like, what the hell's going on over here? Why is he keep getting locked out? And then there's this, there's these tools that the company uses, you know, every company is different. You could check to see what's being, what, what, what IP address is locking them out, basically. So I went and I checked the IP address that's locking them out. And I found the host name of that IP address and I noticed he was logged into another computer. So I went to the other computer and I noticed someone else was logging into it as him. And they accidentally locked him out. And it kept accidentally keep locking him out. So then I'm like, you know, we got to restart the whole computer. So we restarted the whole computer and I had that other person log in with their credentials and he was good after that. So there was somebody else in the same company logging into his second computer and it kept locking him out. That's an issue I had. It's a weird issue. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever heard of that? The name is what? Account lockout and management tools are. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, someone said, I, I never I never leave my account up when working on another PC for that reason. Users sometimes do not look at what, uh, who they're logging in as. Exactly. So that happened to me with a company that we work with. And they had two computers, one they log into that they always use, and the second one they logged into for a little bit. And then someone else trying to log in as him, and they locked him out. They kept locking him out. So you ever heard of that, Steven? I can't hear you, Steven. When you're muted. Is that that little icon you have on your desktop all the time that I kind of wonder what the heck that is, that little head thing? Yes. So open it up. I don't have it. I, I closed my server. But I mean, just open it up because it asks, well, what is it? What, what, I, I have it open on mine. And what do you click on? Blackout status? Yeah. Okay. And so then what do you do next? Domain? 
Domain controller name, site, user. Yeah, so it would it, it would find the domain automatically if you install it on the server. It, it okay. grabs the domain and everything, and then you could just see whoever they're being locked out from. So then, what do you do? You click on the uh, you click on the DC name, and then you do a search. Yeah. So you add the user in there and everything. I'm gonna show you right now. Let me open my. Yeah. Notes. Let's. I want to see this because I've seen that icon up on your desk a few times. I was gonna ask you what the heck is that little head thing, but now I can see it. Yeah, it's something I I, I made a video on this by the way. I have a video sure on. You it. did. Um, but I mean, it's kind of cool. I'm gonna. I think I'll bring that into the. Uh, my new thing, my new gig I have. That's kind of interesting. It's obviously, you, you know, obviously you, you you have to have an approval for it. You can't just run it on yeah. the, you know on the environment. Yeah, I we, so. we, used to, we used to do a lot of weird stuff at the hospital. That so I had I had an issue where someone kept locking himself out, and it tells you, it tells you where they're being locked out from. Really? Where it's, what what objects are locking them out? Whether it's a computer, an iPhone, a laptop, it tells you what it is. Email account as well. Mm hmm. Everything. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Why isn't everybody using this? Yeah, every company is different. Why isn't it, why is it why isn't this on everybody's freaking uh, machine? Because <laughs> you probably had to have rights to it. Well, well, no. Yeah, way. you need rights for it. Mm -hmm. oh, it just doesn't Eddie, 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 and you were looking at me like I have three heads. It's funny. This, this kind of yeah. makes you look look like a freaking rock star. This is an issue that I encountered. That's why I'm going over something Where that you I encountered. Where these lockouts are coming from? Yeah, and then and then you have um, you have uh, you you what have. What about with Office three sixty five? Does it have anything to do with that as well? Office three sixty five, where? As far as locking out, as far as uh, passwords, you know. No, you get you you get locked out of out of a lot of, out of webmail. If someone has like someone logs into webmail and then you know you, you know how you do safe password on Chrome or whatever, mm -hmm. it stores the old password there. And you have to delete all that, otherwise it locks you out as well. I seen that get I seen people get locked out that way too. It's kinda kind of annoying, but interesting. I know when you download it, it asks you to create a folder on where you want to stick the files. That's what it did for me. So I stuck mm -hmm. just created a folder called the Yeah, game. so you have this thing called lockout status tools. Yeah, double, what you use. double click yeah. on it and then you do select target and then there's A Wells, for example, you hit OK. And it tells you what whether what DC they are, what site they are, users locked out, and stuff like that. When's the last password they use? When's the password last set? And it says origin lock. So that means they'll show you where it's being originated from when they're being locked out. It's kind of cool. Very cool. Oh, that'll tell you what locked it out the last time when it locked you out? Mm -hmm. What application? Mm -hmm. <laughs> last best password. Ever heard of this? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kev, thanks for sharing this, man. I think more people should know about this. this I, went over I, really this. Don't even know oh, I got over this before. As as we all get fired from our jobs because Kev Tech from you know YouTube. I got over this before like a thousand times. Come on, guys. No, I never seen that before. Come on, it wasn't a thousand times. Maybe it was a, you know nine hundred ninety nine. It was a thousand. I've kind of missed that nine hundred nine hundred nine. You have no idea how you have no idea what, how annoying it gets when you get a phone call with someone and they're getting locked out a thousand times and then. You don't know what the hell is locking them out, you know? And then you have to you unlock their account. It doesn't work. You unlock it again. You unlock it again. And you're like, you're like, dude, did you change your password on your phone? No, I forgot to change it on my phone. Oh, that's what's locking me out. Oh. So, and that is what that origin uh, part, that is what tells you to go and look, say, hey, look at the phone or look at this or look at that. Mm -hmm. That is kind of like the key there in all this, right? Mm-hmm. What's it called again? Account lockout. Account lockout. Account lockout status. Well, now that there's silence, let me say thank you so much. I'm gonna go eat. I'm starving. Yeah, me too. My kid wants to play. That was the last ticket, right? Yeah, and then some some companies use Active Directory uh, lockout tool as well. It's different ones. So this one, look, this one. Download free copy of admin model for Active Directory. It's different ones. Depends how you have it set up. Yeah, but that's basically, yeah, that's basically what it is, you know? It's basically what it is, so. Gotcha. Yeah, man. Well, so I wanted, I wanted to share that. You have something different now you could use, right? That's a nice, that, that's a nice little nugget to have, I guess. Yeah. You know, when you have a problem. Yeah, some people might not have access to do that, by the way. You know, it depends on your environment, so.
you may not be able to do it. You may be able to do it. You may not be able, you know, it depends where you work, you know, it depends where you are, it depends who you are and everything. So yeah. good to know, but entry level will probably would not have access to this. Well, you could suggest this to a network, uh, level one, level two, level two, level three, level two, level three. Yep. If I mean, assuming they are not ready to use it, you know, some companies have their own programs. They run on third party that are able to check that too, by the way, you know, they have their own, their own third party app that they use. So I use a kind of lockout status tool. I use this in my last job and I use it in my job before that as well, because I always had that issue. Always had that issue. I don't know, you know what the hell is locking think, them up. You would think the RSAT tools would have that thrown in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nope. It just has a little added bonus feature, you know, some kind of mm -hmm. uh, extra little add-on or something like yeah, that. Yeah, net networks. Yeah, exactly what Josh Gilshire said. Exactly the other app, net networks. Net bricks? No, no, net networks. Net this one. Net brick. Networks. So basically, and share my screen again. This one. Let us show your account lockout in real time. It helps you quickly troubleshoot and resolve it. This one. Don is just coming back right now. This one. Thanks. This one. Some companies use this. Depends where you work, where you work, you know? Don is just back. You know, you know, so this is such a cool topic that I had to jump back in again on the Zoom. So uh, zoom, one, zoom room or broom, which one? <laughs> so one other thing that about this, um, DevTech has uh, made a video on this. I made a video on this as well on Netrix. There's another tool. So if you guys check Jobs Go Share Active Directory training, I made a lot on this area as well. Um, the only problem with these tools are here. This is a problem. If you have an ADF fest, which is basically a server that you use to connect to, like a like you know other. It's like a middleman server to let you connect to other services like Office 365 and other places or different type of services you can use in applications. The problem with this tool is going to be like this, and I got stuck over there, okay, is when somebody gets locked out, you know what it will show all the time? It doesn't matter if it's iPhone. It doesn't matter if it's Mac. It will always show that ADFS server in the middle. So now you lost the source right there. And I was losing my head on this because mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm using this tool, and I like this tool too. The reason for this tool is this, and networks and any other tools, is that at least it tells you when the person is getting locked out and how many times and how quickly that account is being locked out. So one time, this, uh, this, uh, the users will get locked out and it will be instant like a burst in a second 15 counts or depending on how many counts you want to make it. So a lot of companies will have five or six. But I made it like to 15 at one point because I wanted to, to get to the point. And in one burst, uh, the account will get locked out. So then I started using, first I started using this tool. Then I went for networks because the networks has a, basically what it does, it, it connects to your domain. And where is this information coming from, by the way, for people to learn this? It's still coming from your domain, right? This in your MNs. If you, if you feel like you don't have this tool, nobody's allowing this tool. And if you do have access, let's say at some point, um, you want to learn this stuff at your lab, go to your domain controller, and this type of information is in your events. It basically pulls the events from your domain controller and display it over here. And then after that, you can use these tools to actually do more like, you know, monitoring and everything. So this tools, I, I don't know if this is, has the ability to send an email, but in networks, what it does when you, when somebody gets locked out, you can even get an email that this person is locked out from this source. But coming back to the ADFS, ADFS all versions never will show you this source. And that's where a lot of people will get stuck. Like, okay, I'm trying it in this company and I always see this ADFS server because that's in the middle. That's where, uh, you know, things are getting logged. Oh, I got logged out of whom where? The source is ADFS server, one, two, three, one, two, four, whatever it is. And you will never get to the point that way. So I just want to add this point for people who are going to try doing this and they may have ADFS. So just if, the, if you have ADFS, know that you will have you will need a new version of ADFS servers to get that working. And that's where yeah, because uh, it'll, it'll show like it'll show like you know what it will show like on mine on my I, I can't show you it because you know it's my job. But in my job, it shows account has been locked out, and it shows the user person, the username of the person that got locked out, and then it says bad password type from this origin, the IP address or the name of the computer. And it says where it originated from and who's logging into it and how they get locked out. They got locked out by authentication or by Office 365. It tells you all that. That's basically what I what I have set up in my environment. Yeah. So if it's a new one, that's definitely going to give you all that information. If it's an old version. It's yeah. Yeah. It, it shows all that. 
makes life um, so much easier. And then uh, because back in the days, um, people would, this was a, a, a nice way for you guys. And a lot of people say, why don't we use these tools? Uh, somebody just made a good point. First of all, not a lot of new uh, professionals know about this type of tools, right? This is something that you will come across when you have an issue like what me and Kev been through. Like you have a account getting locked out and you have no clue where it's getting, where is the source. And in my case, when you were asking for the first time when, when this person is getting locked out, so what could be the reason? Now, there are many other cases that some people may have that keychain on the Mac and that's connecting to the Outlook again and again with the old password. Some people may have an old application that uses a cache password on the Outlook on the mobile device and now it's getting locked out. So this led you to this type of tools basically as a level one because most of the level one don't know how to get into the domain events and kind of find this information. So most likely a lot of people are going to find these type of tools because of this reason that don't have access to certain servers and, and pull information like that. And it's not easy to just pull information from events anyway. It's like thousands of events going inside who have time to do this stuff. So a lot of people come across this type of information because they've been through this stuff. And that's why I say a lot of people say, okay, level one, why don't they put this as a, like a, a like a, like this should be like really in there. And that's why, Companies are coming out with these tools like networks are more advanced than, than the tool that we're showing right here. But of course, this is also coming from, I, I believe if I'm right, Kev, this is also straight coming from Microsoft link, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So, so yeah, and it gives you multiple other tools as well to, to play around with. Um, so yeah, just, but before any level one try to install this stuff, make sure you understand that uh, you talk to your sysadmins or other people because you're going to be connecting this tool to a domain controller. Now, let me tell you one thing about this. If you run this and try to run it and grab information, I, as a security administrator, can see what you're doing to the domain. And at a certain point, if the domain audit logs are disabled, it probably won't work. The reason for that is that it's disabled. Now, in some most of the companies, 90% of the time, they would enable it because they want to troubleshoot it themselves. So just if you run it, make sure you know that there is a person who can see your machine, what it's doing to the domain because it's pulling a lot of information right there. So just give you a little warning before you guys jump ahead and uh, do this. I'm sure Kevin has a lot of access in here, but most of level one probably would not know this and not, not notice this. And I usually tell Eddie and anybody that when I talk about scanning or spice works or anything like that, make sure you know what you're doing because the, the, the security people are hired for this specific reason, right? They check these logs every day. So you don't want to be your machine on the top of the logs that, you know, Eddie 1W10 uh, is connecting to domain every single day, right? I agree. With, I agree with you. It's all about security too. And if, if it's even allowed in your environment, you're going to get in trouble for that. You get fired for that too, actually, because you don't know, you don't know if you're installing an application that creates a vulnerability for security, and then people can get in the system. You know, does that make sense? So that does happen. So I did make a video on it, by the way, in case you know, Steven, you're wondering about. I share my screen real quick. Yeah, it's right here. I go over dealing with accounts level one, account reset, account password, tips and tricks, uh, level one, help desk, and I, I go over it in this video. I have a video on it. It's like a 13 minute video so it's right there okay thank you yeah I have a video on it because some people don't know about it and it's good to know because you can identify what's locking you out you know so especially for a lot of people that are new in it sometimes you you, you get these people that they, they forget to reset their password or they're getting locked out a thousand times you don't know what the hell's going on you know so uh, Keftech, talking about locking out when you clear a user, there's two kinds of users. You, you want me to go to group? You want me to go to group policy? <laughs> no, hey, we now have a group policy. Here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's uh, two kinds of users. There's local users and uh, roaming users. So sometimes the problem happens when there is uh, this. Is what again? I think this is my my opinion. Uh, I think this is when sometimes when you create uh, multi, uh, there's no roaming users and you create a uh, local user. Sometimes you can get locked out. Because roaming users, you have the ability to store the files and folders and settings up for the server. And then you can go to any other computers in the domain. And then you can just sign in and you can pull all the files and folders uh, from the server uh, to the computer. So sometimes when you create like uh, local users, I think this is one of the reasons why you get locked out. I've I seen, I seen, I seen people get locked out from 
Um, some people have a local admin. So every company, uh, well, not every company, but some companies have a local admin account you can log into if, if someone's computer doesn't work. I've seen that set up. When you talk about roaming profile, I seen, I don't know what you're not exactly sure what you're talking about. I seen roaming profile as a, when someone logs in and their, and their um, profile is corrupted and it creates a roaming profile. I seen that. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure you're roaming talking profile, about that. Uh, roaming profile is something I do in my company. So for example, uh, uh, okay, you know, if you have a domain and multiple users and you connect to multiple users, I can connect to my computer. But when I, when I connect to another computer in my domain, I don't get the files, I don't get the background, I don't get the setting. I get, I get a brand new desktop experience. So this, okay, is, oh, this is a good thing because you don't keep so much latency on the files. Your folds, files and folders are stored locally on your desktop. But if suppose you have a C, uh, certain uh, important people where they, are keep, they, they keep on moving to many, many, maybe you have a situation where uh, okay, every day you report, you don't report to the same computer, you report to different, different computers. This and, everything, is where, and everything shows up on the, when they log in, right? Ah, uh, yes. Everything is stored on the servers. Yeah, that, that, and even that, if you that, go that. to another computer in a, in a domain, you still can pull the files, folders, settings, everything back to the computer. So it's like a very seamless process. Okay, now, now I know what you're talking about. You're talking about AppSense. So when someone logs, well, AppSense is a third-party application. When you log in, it redirects your documents, your desktop, and download folders. And it creates a roaming profile. And every time you log in, it adds, it adds those files to another computer. And it saves all your changes and all your settings. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, AppSense is a third-party software. You see, this one, you can do it natively on Windows Server. You can do it inside Windows Server itself. Yeah, I see. I know Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that does happen. Sometimes people log in and then it redirects their, even their password too. It gets stored and then basically it locks them out because their password is on another system or another computer. I know what you're talking about. Now I know what you're talking about. That makes sense. That makes perfect yeah, sense. Going back to what you just said earlier, I mean... It doesn't create a roaming profile. It creates a temporary profile if your user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Temporary profile. profile. Yeah, yeah. Not a roaming profile. That's different. Yeah, right. yeah. There's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. I agree with you. Yep. And uh, I know we're talking about. Yeah, that's at, at, so some companies and the law firms they run um, um, AppSense, and then when you run AppSense, uh, it has its own server, and basically, unless you have it installed on the server itself, and basically what it does is it, it, it anytime a user logs in. It saves their desktop, it saves their downloads, it saves my documents. And then if you go to another computer, it grabs all that and puts it on the other computer. Yeah, uh, Kevtech, uh, yeah, uh, this is not only, uh, also, it also is done like in call center. So for example, if, if you come to a call center where people are temporarily assigned to a computer, you don't get assigned to a permanent computer, you get assigned to a temporary computer. And then next day you assign to another computer. So this is where it's very important when you have the, the profile where you can pull it down from the servers, all that. When you're not attached to one computer, you keep on moving to different, different computers every day. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a lot of stress, Raj, on your network doing that. I mean, using local, using roaming profiles is a lot of stress on the domain controller. I mean, you, got, you have to have a lot of, you know, storage on that domain controller to do it, plus a lot of network bandwidth. So you must have a pretty fast bandwidth there at your work. Now, other than that, if you guys are wondering why it's slow, that can be a good reason why it's slow. You guys are really hogging up a lot of bandwidth when you guys jump around on like computers like that with these roaming profiles, no? Yeah, you, you have you have a weird setup, Raj. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, in my company, they want some people. Okay, this is where I work. I, I work in something like a call center kind of thing, where basically they want uh, me to me and my team where. Uh, they don't want people to be attached. Tech. They don't. Okay, we have several solutions for this. One is like what I say is you create a virtual server the, on the server and you pull it down. Uh, what what is that thing? The what the thing which you say uh, VDI. Yeah, one solution is creating a VDI. Obviously, this this advantage of VDI is it's very very network bandwidth heavy. There's no way you can do that. So another solution which uh, I'm my. Uh, teammates suggest was why not actually create a roaming profile and this the, this is not to every uh, user to to some users who keep on changing uh, computers all the time yeah i don't like our setup is not uh it's not set up that way um depends where you are what company you're at you guys use some weird technology by the way now, this, tell me if i'm wrong on this but with the roaming profile when you Log onto the computer. It's going to pull everything, all your fold, all your information from the domain controller, 
down to your computer. But once you get off that computer, that information is on there. So everything, your documents, whatever is stored on that one computer, correct? Yeah, it's correct. That's why we use uh, this okay. technology together with BitLocker to encrypt the hard drive. Anything happens, even if you steal the hard drive, there's nothing much you can do with it. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I think so many companies use roaming profiles, but around places that I know of, because that's takes too much space. But who knows? Yeah, I agree, I agree with you. Is there any other solution you guys have in, uh, where uh, besides using VDI, okay, another way one of my friends was suggesting is why not use Azure desktop uh, infrastructure where instead of storing everything uh, to the your Windows server, you pull it from Azure, but the difference is Azure have one of the best compression algorithm so that when you pull the desktops order, it's very smooth. Instead of using VDIs and all of this, those stuff, because those are very, very bandwidth heavy, you go to Azure and you pull a compressed image uh, down to your computer, something like Azure uh, desktop infrastructure, something like that. There's a new technology, but I'm not very sure about it. Yeah, you, is it Azure? Azure has the ability to create virtual desktops and stuff like that. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah. Then, then they also have something called Azure Desktop, where you can. Mm -hmm. I, know, uh, I, know you, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, you store it on the cloud, and then you pull it down. Like it's like something like local profiles or that uh, roaming profiles or that to your computer. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, it's like AWS uh, Workspace. I know what you're yeah, talking correct, about. Correct, correct, Similar correct. to AWS workspace. I know, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. But I, I, we wouldn't set that up in our environment. You know, it depends how you have it set up. So, and uh, even JavaScript here just says expensive. Why would we do that? It's very expensive. He just said. So. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. We've been here for what three hours? Almost three hours. Uh, yeah. yeah, looks like that way, right? Yeah. No, wow. wait, six, six, six three o'clock. hours and yeah. 43 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, three hours and 43 minutes. My goodness. 43 hours and 45 minutes. Jesus. Oh, almost four. Well, almost four hours. Well, we'll yeah, I, I, I still haven't made the record of me doing live for, for a whole day. I'll do that later. <laughs> uh, uh, Kev, is it tomorrow what uh, Danish is doing the live stream? Huh? <laughs> yeah, so I'm a, I'm gonna jump to Donish's live stream and we're gonna do mock interviews and That's hopefully Vietnamese, hopefully right? yeah hopefully Steven could join me. Oh, so where could do join. I where do I sign up? Is it go to his YouTube channel? He'll be live streaming from there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in his community yeah. chat. Mm -hmm. Yep, either okay, there or okay, Discord. Okay. Go to Discord and check. Discord is there too. I'm on Discord okay, by the way. Man. I'm on Discord by the way. So if you ever want to mm -hmm. talk. If you want to ever talk on Discord or you know just have a conversation, you could just you know hey, 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 talk hey. to me. Watch it, watch it, watch it. So, we're, we're on we're on Discord. Like, I'm on Discord. Steven's on Discord. Donish is on Discord, and a bunch of other people are on Discord. So. Uh yeah, Kev. I also I would like to share a tool with you which I use in my company. I don't know whether you use it or not. Uh, if you want to troubleshoot Windows, there is a built-in tool in uh, Microsoft called Windows Dart. D A R T. And I don't know whether you guys know about it. This is really useful if you want to troubleshoot something if there is a problem with your Windows. I have never. I'm not familiar with that. I'm watching. Uh, yeah, Steve, you should I'm, watching I'm watching Steven get attacked. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you that. Yeah, you, should, right now. you should go and check it out because it's a really good tool. D A R T Microsoft D A R T. Microsoft D R I T. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, see, Steven is uh, Steven yeah, getting Dark attacked. Has been around for a long, for a long time. Steven, Steven's getting attacked right now, and I'm, I'm being entertained by him being attacked. He's, he's getting attacked. Yeah. We keep throwing stuff at him. Yeah, Paw Patrol stuff. Hey, yeah. yeah, Raj, at some point I'll make a video on Citrix, and I'll make a video on VMware and stuff like that, just so you know, and then I'll get you involved probably, and we'll just talk about it. Some yeah, okay, no problem, bro. No problem. Yeah, yeah, the full name for that is uh, Diagnostic and Recovery Toolset. Microsoft Diagnostic and Recovery Toolset. You should go and check it out. Check it out. It's a, it's a really good tool. If, like, for example, okay, what you can do with this tool, I know there are another third party tools, like Hiron Boot CD, they can do this. Oh, but yes, the, I'm familiar with Hiron Boot CD. I'm as yeah, my, but the good part, the good part of, yeah, but the good part about this, this is built into Windows. It's a native tool built into Windows. You don't need to download a third party tool. So, what you can do with this tool is you can reset the Windows password. You can go into the registry and recover the registry in case you 
we do a backup and you never do a backup and recover the registry. And another thing which I really like about this tool is uh, you can even stop drivers, third-party drivers from starting up uh, in case if there's a problem. So for example, if your Windows, if you have a problem, the first thing you'll do is you'll why go don't you, to why, why don't you Why don't you make a YouTube channel, Raj? <laughs> join Steven. Uh. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll join Steven uh, and then we collaborate. Why don't you make a YouTube channel and then make a video on the root policy? Yeah, no problem, bro. If you I have a the time, channel. I'll do it. Make a video on group policy or something. But Steven has a yeah, YouTube bro, channel no now, so. He's being attacked right now. He's getting bullied right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 look at that. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's laughing. His kid's yeah. laughing over there. He's being attacked. I feel bad for him. He's getting beat up. Yeah. I feel, I feel bad. Like, I, like, I'm scared to go over there. I might get jumped by his kid. <laughs> I thought New York was bad. Look at Steven getting a uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Where's the, where's the cover? Over there. Where? Over there. Yeah, uh, Jobs Kisher said, Raj, you better be prepared for the, for, for the attack of interviews. I won't show any mercy. That's what Jobs Kusher said. Yeah, that means, bro, don't worry. I will, I will join tomorrow. I will join tomorrow. And um, you'll, you'll see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But it's usually like interview questions. And it might be very technical with... I'm not sure what Steven's going to do. But I, I'm very uh, personality wise. I do personality questions. Study your well-known pork. <laughs> your well-known pork. <laughs> I got hit with that too many times in my life already. I'm sick of that. Yeah. Yeah, Steven's still getting attacked. He's getting attacked by every by, by his kid. It's very entertaining. I'm being entertained by this, actually. That's why I haven't left yet. I'm being entertained by this. Yeah, this is the YouTube video when it's starting to sell. Getting tortured. All right, guys. I'm going to let you guys go. I got to go eat. It's getting late right now. Very late. All right. Raj, you have anything you want to say, Raj? you have any more questions? No more. No more freaking out. No more group policy questions. <laughs> That was good policy. No, 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 no questions, bro. Good anyway, policy. thanks, bro, for, for sharing all your knowledge. With you. I think the problem is a lot of people, when they come to help desk, they, they don't really have much of a much YouTube channel to actually go and check how to learn all this content. The, the biggest, most difficult part is the starting to IT. And your channel, and together with Job Street Share, I think they're doing a good job uh, sharing a lot of knowledge. Hey, hey, hey don't forget Steven. Don't forget Steven. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Steven's I'm, channel, too. Uh, Steve, I'm, Steven, I'm like, I learned, I learned the uh, group policy stuff eh, <laughs> from his channel. That's, that's, that's where I actually learned all this stuff. So thanks thanks for so much for sharing all this stuff. Yeah, man, Steven, Steven's have a robot, you know? It is. It's, it's like more like experience than it is knowledge. Think of it that way, guys. Experience is everything. Steven, Steven's, uh, Steven's a robot, but do. Steven's a robot, but he won't tell anybody. You know, he's Steven can do. Uh, Steven got a small request. Can you do more group policy videos? <laughs> maybe, maybe like do a four-hour video of every group policy object. <laughs> yeah, right. That'll take you forever. Kid, he's getting attacked. He's getting attacked. All right, guys. You guys take care. Um. You guys stay safe. You guys have a good Saturday. I'll be here tomorrow morning, um, drinking a cup of coffee, and uh, I'll join I'll join Donish's uh, channel. I just hop in. And that's at two o'clock Eastern time, correct? Two o'clock Eastern time. Yep, two p.m. Eastern time. Um, right. Bring out bring 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 out your interview questions to attack everyone. I mean I mean bring out your regular bring out yourself and that's it. And um. Bring your bring your kid too, and I want to see him see attack, him attack you. you. He'll be here. He'll be going nuts. All right. All right. All right. Okay. We need to end this. <laughs> All right. You guys, you guys take care. All right. Raj, Raj take, care, okay, take care. Take care, guys. Take care. Take care. Take care, Raj. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Take, take care. care. Have a good night. <laughs>